Um, I'll just start. I know I'm probably for the whole room here today, the, the, the newest face of the group. I do recognize a lot of you and it's, it's good to see you again. Um, I know we've worked together here at this table uh, and we've worked together in other capacities. For those of you that don't know me uh, at the table, my name is Terry Harmon. I am an attorney at Sniffin and Spellman and have worked with the district for a number of years. Um, so I'll be here. You may see a, a my colleague Michael Spellman potentially be here at the table as well, um, but it's good to it's good to see you all again, and, and um, I'll let everybody else on our team kind of go around introduce themselves, and then then turn it over to you. Carter Morrison, CFO for the district. Jeff Raven, Director of Recruitment and Retention. Our College Martin High School Coordinator. Lisa Estes, Assistant Superintendent, Student Support Services. Ad Holtz, MCEA. Susan Rayo, MCEA. Kimberly Love, MCEA. Bonnie Burch, MCEA. Matt Theobald, President, MCEA. Gary Simmons, Chief Negotiator, MCEA from FEA. Dan Grossiaga, MCEA. Sherry Richardson, Coordinator of Professional Standards. Julie Sessa, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources for the district. Thank you. I do definitely recognize some of you uh, sitting across from me now. It's all coming back a little bit. So um, I know. I'm walking into or on session 14 and my understanding from same thing yeah. <laughs> we're 13 um, it's okay so if I if I'm correct though where things left off I believe at the last session there was a salary proposal made by the district and I know there's I think there may be a response um, from your side and then we've got I don't know if there's any other items too we'll have to go through but I think it would make sense at least now maybe to start with the salary side of it I don't know if you feel the same way, Gary. Um, that's fine. That's fine with me. I need an opportunity to set up the, the um, projector. Yeah, okay. the projector for this PowerPoint presentation.
like you have it won't work. The audio enhancement won't? It's not hooked up to this system. I'm going to this one so that this one is working. Yeah.
First, first and foremost, um, thanks for, for everyone who, who um, took time out of their busy schedule to make it here, here today. So the, the reason um, I wanted to, to give this, this um, response, it, I wasn't going to do a response, but um, I thought it was, it was necessary over um, after what was, was communicated over the past uh, couple weeks. I came into this bargaining session thinking that, that this would be a, a lot quicker, quicker than this, but I have a, a duty and responsibility to, to my bargaining unit members who um, definitely wanted me to speak on some of the things that has been communicated. And I'm gonna take the opportunity to, to do that in this uh, presentation. So, the title of, of, of this presentation is MCA's response to Martin County School Board's best and final offer. And, and the subtext of that is, have we closed the gap between the cost of living and the average state salary for teachers in, in Martin County? And the reason why I place that there is because when the district placed this on the table on February 27th, that's the framework that we had to operate from, whether or not every proposal that comes across the table does it answer the objectives that we laid out in the beginning of, of bargaining. So that's the framework. When we get to the term best and final offer, we're looking at accepting one of the size offers or arguing which proposal is best in impasse. So the question at hand was, have we closed the gap between the cost of living and the average state salary for the teachers in Martin County. But before we get to, to that question at hand, I think it's very, very important to discuss how did we get here. So after we negotiated the TSIA dollars, we came back to the table in, in November to begin cleaning up the rest of our contracts. Now there's preparation that's involved in um, getting ready to come to negotiations. I can't speak much for the district side, but on, on the union side, what we begin to do is, is gather up all of the settlements or the information that we have that's currently at the table in all of our comparable and contiguous school districts. We, we um, take an opportunity to define what our objectives are before we get to the bargaining table, because that's the only way to determine whether or not you've been successful or unsuccessful in a bargaining session. So there's a lot of work that gets um, put behind putting a proposal on the table. We don't just pull numbers out of the hat and, and place it on the table. There's actually thought and, and careful discussion that's involved in that. So the school board started bargaining, ses start, started bargaining session number four with the proposal of 800 highly effective for annual contract, 600 effective for annual contract, 600 highly effective for professional services contracts, and 500 effective for professional service. So MCA obviously rejected this proposal. But there's reasons why we rejected the proposal. The district's initial proposal did nothing to make Martin County School District competitive with the contiguous and similarly sized school districts. So despite what has been communicated to you, the district's first offer 
did not make us competitive. It did not have us in the running for being number one in the Treasure Coast as indicated in the video. The district made no proposal to address the 400 plus teachers who have left the district over the last four years. So we didn't reject this proposal because of the numbers. We rejected the, pro the proposal because it didn't answer the objective that we established at the beginning of this process. MCA would attempt to address these issues in bargaining session number five. And, and the reason why I included that last one is because I'm not gonna vilify the school district with their first proposal because they put this proposal on the table and they didn't hear what our objectives were yet. So we didn't place a proposal, we didn't give a presentation, this is what the district started with. So on the surface, it didn't answer none of our objectives, so we have a responsibility to counter. So on December 5th, 2023, MCA made our counter proposal. Martin County Education Association established a few objectives members would like to see in an acceptable salary packet. The first, Martin County ranks number seven in cost of living in the state of Florida. How can we help our bargaining unit members afford to live in this community? Objective number one. Objective number two, Martin County ranks number 46 in the state for average salaries. How do we close the gap between average salary and the cost of living ranking? Objective number two. Third objective, how can Martin County become competitive with the surrounding school districts? Why do I include this? Because there, there are four school districts in the Treasure Coast. You have Martin County, St. Lucie County, Indian River County, and Okeechobee County, right? Of those four school districts, I am at the bargaining table on four of the eight contracts. So I'm the chief negotiator at four of the eight contracts in the Treasure Coast. So I, I have a pretty good foundation of where everybody is, is at. Um, I'm not at the table in St. Lucie County, but the beautiful thing about St. Lucie County is that the president of the union for Indian River County is, is um, the sister of the president of the union in St. Lucie County. So I get a lot of, of information from, from um, St. Lucie County as, as well. So what MCA did was inform the school board of the cost of living rank Martin County has. As I said in the slide before, Martin County ranks number seven. MCA presented where Martin County ranked in average salary in the state. And if you notice in this, in this sheet, what we explained in our initial presentation was that Martin County is the only one that is in the top 10 for cost of living and is not in the top 30 with respect to the state rank and the average salary. That's why we included that as a point of, of contention that we wanted to solve with an acceptable salary proposal. MCA also introduced comparable school districts that Martin County should be competitive with. On the contiguous side, Palm Beach, our neighbors to the south, St. Lucie, our neighbors to the north, and Okeechobee, our neighbors to the west. And then we have similarly sized school districts. Charlotte County, Citrus County, and Indian River, our um, neighbor, two counties above us um, northwards. So MCA presented where Martin County ranked amongst the contiguous and similarly sized school districts in 2016-2017. If you look in 2016, 2017, this is all um, presented in the December, the December 5th bargaining session. We explained to the district that based upon the numbers that we've collected from the Florida Department of Education, in 2016, 2017, Martin was in the middle of the pack with those comparable and contiguous size school districts. By 22, 23, look where Martin has fallen behind. We've taken several steps backwards as other districts passed us by. Now, out of these, <coughs> Okeechobee and Indian River, again, I'm at the bargaining table for those counties. And we also pointed out how little the school board has contributed to the teacher salary during this time frame in comparison to the other districts. So we didn't just put numbers on the table, we put context behind the numbers that we put on the table. So what MCA did was counter the school board's proposal that continued their backwards trajectory with 3,000 highly effective, 2250 for effective, both of those are in annual contracts, 2250 highly effective on professional service, 2,000 effective on professional service. In order for us to, to become competitive with our, our neighbors, we have to get something in place that would be considered an increase to the base salary because putting it all through the millage doesn't count towards the base salary. 
And, um, and we wanted to make sure that our veteran teachers got a large chunk because you know with respect to pay for performance, we have legislative hurdles, right? So in order to get our veteran teachers around this 2250, 2000 mark, we have to give a, a large sum to the highly effective um, on the annual contract. So that was the thought process behind MCEA's proposal. How did the district respond to MCEA's proposal? Well, th that was the most um, hurtful part to me because at the se same session that MCEA made their counter proposal, the district increased their initial offer by $200 as a counter proposal while never considering MCEA's proposal. Let me explain that. The moment that I finished this presentation, our proposal was swiftly replaced with the district's counter proposal increasing their initial offer $200. So there wasn't a break in our bargaining session where our proposal was taken to the school board and they actually had dialogue and thought provoking conversation about what is it exactly that the union is trying to accomplish in this bargaining session. The only thing was their price point is too high, get that proposal off the table, replace it with a $200 incre increment. Completely ignoring that Martin ranks number seven in the state in cost of living. So increasing it from 800 to 1,000 does nothing to move our, our um, to stimulate our members' pockets with the respect of being number seven in the state for cost of, of living. Clearly understanding that their counter proposal does nothing to improve where Martin County ranks in the state for average teacher salaries. So this is the reason why that proposal was rejected. That, that counter proposal refused to close the gap between cost of living and average teacher salary. And it continues the district's backwards trajectory and keeps us behind comparable and contiguous districts. Ladies and gentlemen, that counter proposal isn't a proposal of a school board that wants to be number one in the Treasure Coast. That's the sign of a tone deaf school board who actually didn't even take into consideration what we're actually trying to do. And, and it's not collaborative. It's not collaborative, it's, it's not productive. And prior to, to coming here, I wanted to make this, this point. So prior to coming here, I had a phone call with the interim superintendent in Okeechobee County. And I said, I wanted to give you a call this morning because I'm giving a presentation in Martin County for um, bargaining tonight. And he said, oh man, Gary, you guys got the jump on us. Are you starting bargaining for 24, 25 already? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I promise you, I'm not making this up. This is the conversation <laughs> I had this morning. And I said, no, we're still bargaining 23, 24. He said, Gary, you got to be kidding me. I said, no, we're bargaining number, uh, still bargaining this school year. We're in our fifth month of negotiations. He said, we was able to do two contracts in, 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 in a four week time period. I said, yes, because it's true collaboration in this school district. And that's why I'm trying to get this school district to come in a collaborative manner. This district absolutely had no desire in being competitive with the other districts that neighbor Martin County or the similarly sized school districts, nor did they proposal come close to making us number one in the Treasure Coast. MCA made a second presentation to the school board. We wanted to appeal to their common sense. If we're not appealing to their wallets, let's appeal to their common sense. The central focus of our second presentation was the school grades. Right? So we did phenomenal as a, as a bargaining unit with respect to these grades. The districts highlighted it and plastered it all over the website. That's where I got this clip from. So this is directly off the district's website. MCA made the argument that our members performed incredibly and deserved more than what was being proposed, that $200 increase. This trend of increasing their proposal by $200 each of the next two sessions as MCEA decreased our initial offer by the same margin. So again, we started in November. By January 18th, 2024, session number nine, the numbers on the table were MCEA, 2,600 highly effective, 1950 um, effective on annual contracts, 1950 highly effective, 1850 effective on a professional service contract, and yet our $2,000 retention bonus. Why did we include a $2,000 retention bonus? 
We included that because the same time that we were at the table discussing how to improve the conditions in the school district, there was a workshop taking place at the very same time. The subject of that workshop dealt with the um, MC, MCSD's retention. In that workshop, it was explained that over the course of four years, so that's my time at the bargaining table as the chief negotiator for MCEA. In the four years that I've been the chief negotiator, MCEA, I mean, um, Martin County School District has lost 453 employees. Let me put that into perspective for you. 453 employees, it's 497 instructional employees in Okeechobee County. So the amount of employees that this district lost is equivalent to 98% of the instructional staff at Okeechobee doing a mass exodus. That issue needs to be addressed. So we put down a $2,000 retention bonus based off of federal dollars, ARP, ESSA. We didn't just pull that out of our hats. The reason why is because of our interim principal in Okeechobee told me to make sure that I tell, put this on the record. Every year since COVID affected us as a community and as a nation and as humanity, they have provided a $2,000 retention bonus to their employees on instructional and classified without the union even having to ask for it. The same thing in Indian River, the same thing in St. Lucie. So the reason why we asked is because we want this school district to be competitive with their, with their neighbors. So that's what we asked for. MCD, MCSD came back with yet another $200 increase, 1,200 on highly effective, 900 effective, 900 are highly effective on professional service, 800 effective uh, for professional service. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you yet again, is this a proposal for someone that has the aspirations to be number one in the Treasure Coast? Is this a proposal for, some, for a district that says they have their veteran teachers at the forefront of their thought process? Absolutely not, because the veterans would only get this amount. That's what the veterans are, are, are getting with respect to that. So absolutely not. This isn't a, a proposal that says I want to be number one or that we're putting our teachers first. And then the most insulting part is after five long weeks of waiting for a response from the school board, MCEA was presented with the school board's best and final offer on 227-2024. And I call the district's best and final offer their first and only. And the reason why I say it's their first and only because this is the only proposal that was placed on the district, on the table, that I didn't clean my windshield with. And I'm being very, very generous with that, with that description. No other proposal that I went through prior to options one and options two was even worth our consideration. So what we did was swiftly deny that. But let's talk about option number one for a second. Option number one, pay for performance didn't change. So we're still at 1,200, the 1,200 figure that we just spoke of. So you see Martin County School District's proposal down there in red. Option one is that very same figure. And then it's a response of our retention bonus. Now our retention bonus proposal was placed on the table in November. We got a response to that February 26. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a 12 week time lapse between when we initially placed our proposal on the table and when we got a response. 12 weeks but yet the video that was sent out to, to you all this week said that the union is delaying. We come here every bargaining session with the ability to make a deal and walk out of here with a tentative agreement every time we come here. Every session that ended from sessions number one through sessions number 12, the district always ended the session saying, well, we have to take this back to the school board. So we'll see you at the next bargaining session. We don't have to take it to anybody. We can go right in this room, right here, and come back with an agreement. So after 12 weeks, we heard a, um, a response to our, our retention stipend that rapidly reduced our request from 2,000 that's competitive with the rest of the school districts um, it, that neighbors us, and it reduced it to 790. That's option one. Option two had a pay for performance where 
those numbers were greatly reduced, 175, 75, 50. And then to introduce this year of experience, salary adjustment, $85 a year for um, verified experience, capped at 3,000 for um, up to year 31. And then as a response to the retention bonus, yet again. So this retention bonus reduced it from 2,000 to 790, yet again. So when we're looking at, when we're looking at, at this proposal, we're looking at this proposal, it, it's a, a, a great reduction. We waited 12, 12 weeks and we didn't even get a response from the district that gave us half of what we were, were asking for. So I wanted to focus on this years of experience salary adjustment. So when, I, when this was first presented on the 27th, this is what came to my mind. Option number two looks very, very familiar. That's why I included our two buddies here. These are fraternal twins. And I'm a twin, and I'm, I have a real fascination about twins. But if you don't know what a fraternal twin is, you all educators, I'm quite sure I'm educating or speaking to the choir. But fraternal twins, they're born at the same time, but they don't necessarily look alike, right? I'm an identical twin, so me and my, my twin brother, we look exactly alike. So fraternal, the reason why I use this graphic is because this, this um, option looks very, very familiar to me. This over here is an excerpt from one of the contracts that I negotiate in the Treasury Code. So this comes from, um, from the, the school district of Indian River County. And if you look at our, our um, desk supplement, I got, I got kind of excited about this. And the reason why is because at this proposal, with this proposal, it felt as if the district is, or, or the school board, is finally listening to what the objectives we outline. And I thought that it would have been much more fruitful if we spent the last three weeks speaking about the benefits of, of, of this proposal without the mud slinging in and, and the slander. Because MCEA had a firm grasp of where we wanted to go with this proposal immediately after it was placed um, on, on the table. And I'm going to take the opportunity to explain to you why. So this option, it follows the same approach that IRCEA in the school district of Indian River used to address compression and retention in a true collaborative manner that took a few hours to agree to. So I want to talk about that for a second. We engage in what's called interest-based bargaining in Indian River County. So this framework that answers all of the concerns that, we, that, that I mentioned earlier, this framework if it's understood by everybody correctly, you'd be kind of, 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 of excited about it because when we work together to formulate this proposal, we were excited about it. So this, we're at the five month part. It took us five hours to come up with this in Indian River. What we did was we called Pizza Hut. We got five, six boxes of, of pizza. We all sat around. You see how it is here. You have the district on one side. Union on the other side. No, I was sitting right next to Dr. Moore, the superintendent for Indian River. Mr. Fagan, who is, is the um, Carter Morrison of Indian River, he's right there with, with his spreadsheet. He has his computer hooked up, so all of us are seeing the numbers. We're plugging these numbers into real time. So if you look up, up here, this is what Indian River is getting this year. Because what they labeled as the retention pay that the fraternal twin of our, our yes supplement, that takes effect next school year. So for the 24-25 school year. So up here is what their increase is this year. So you look at our veterans, 21 plus, right? They have a 4.20% increase. Years 16 to 20, 3.50% increase. 9 to 15, 2.25% increase. 4 to 8, 1.75, 0 to 3 is a 1%. And then if you notice the pay for performance numbers, they're very, very similar to what we have in on, on the table currently, right? But let's remind you guys. So with the pay for performance numbers, this is what they're what um, is on the table for, for Martin County. Again, this is what's been tentatively agreed upon in Indian River. 
So it's, it's very, very similar. And they increase the highly effective on annual to 125 just so that the professional service contract can get at least $100 added to their, their base salary. So we moved them up 125 so that this group would get 100. So if you're looking at, at our proposal, we have 100, and the only thing that we can give professional services under highly effective is $75. So that's why you see 125 as, as the annual cap, so that with highly effective, whether you're annual or your PSC, you're getting at least a $100 increase to your base salary. Now here's the fraternal twin, right here, retention pay. And I, I, I have to, to put this on, on record. When we made our, our, our proposal, our last town's proposal in January, uh, Mr. Morrison said in that proposal, he, he listened to our presentation and he asked, would you be interested in trying to resolve this issue in a multi-year agreement or a multi-year approach of solving these objectives? The moment that Mr. Morrison had said that in the meeting, I, I knew what his framework was, or what, what, what his mind was, was shifting towards, and it's, it's this same model that we did in, in Indian River. So that's why I got a little bit excited, because I knew where this idea originated from. This isn't like a brain trust that the school board just decided to throw out there. This is the idea that came out of true collaborative bargaining in Indian River County. So let me tell you the reason why I'm excited about this. So option one is the same proposal the district made in session eight and included a response to the retention bonus that MCA proposed 12 weeks prior. And option one has a one-time retention bonus of 790 reduced from 2000, which is non-recurring. So let me explain that. The reason why I said I was a little bit excited about this when it was presented is because when you look at the union's proposal, we have high numbers that's on this proposal. Yes, it goes to the base salary, but it's not recurring. Every year we would have to renegotiate this pay for performance terms. With this yes supplement, this is recurring. So every year you're getting money added to your base. And I've been like scoping on online and reading text messages that are forward to, forwarded to me and I want to take the opportunity to explain what this really is. This is the framework that, that we, we model in Indian, in Indian River. So it's not you get a multiplier of $85 by the years of service that you have, and then the next years you're, you're, just, you're just getting $85 increase. That, that's not the proper interpretation of this proposal. So let's say that you are a 10-year employee and you have 10 years of verified experience, you take that 10 years and you multiply it by 85, that should get you 850. The very next year, you're getting that 850 again, but you add $85 to it. So now you're at what, 935? And then the next year, you're taking your years of experience, multiplying it by 85 yet again. So the third year, you're at 1,020. So this is all increases to your base salary, not a one-time big chunk and then just $85. No, you multiply your years of service by 85 every year, and that's what your increase is going to be. So when we sit here and we contemplate the proposal that's on the table, do we say no to the union, to, to the district proposal that replaces of a non-recurring, even if we fight for, for 2,000, if we fight for, for 2,000 on the retention bonus, it's still a one-time thing. Do we go for the one-time payment that's a little bit larger for, for um, some, some of our years of experience, folks, or do we go for the term that consistently adds money onto our base salary year in and, and year out? So that's why we, we, well, I know me personally, I got excited about this one because I felt that Martin, Martin County was finally hearing what we were articulating in our objectives in order to have a successful bargaining session um, this year. Because 
there's no greater respect than to see the work that you've, that you've labored over be picked up by um, a, another district and say, I, I think that that model is the proper way to go. Like, let's, let's look into that model. In my opinion, it's, it's, it's genius when we look at things that were tentatively agreed upon by the union and other districts because we all work together despite what you, you hear. I'm familiar with what's going on around the table because we talk about it on a weekly basis. Just like Mr. Main said, they have a, a, an executive session every Monday. We don't have an executive session, but I have a, a, a Zoom meeting with all of my colleagues around the state who's at the bargaining table, and I get updates on what's going on at the bargaining table. So option number two, it greatly reduces the money applied to pay for performance as I outlined. It includes the yes adjustment, which is recurring and added to the base salary. Why is that important, ladies and, and gentlemen? It's important because the past couple of years, we've been receiving teacher salary increase allocation dollars from the state. The purpose of those teacher salary increase allocation dollars was to increase the, base, the minimum base salary in the state of Florida to 47.5. And in order to get to 47.5, there was a lot of, of money dumped into the very beginning of the salary schedule, and that created compression. By having a, a yes, this yes adjustment, or what is called the retention bonus in Indian River, it addresses this compression issue. Like, that's one of the things that I agreed with in, um, in, in Mr. Main's video uh, that, that went out yesterday. But the problem is, is that none of the previous proposals ever address that. And we've been trying to address this compression issue since the TSIA dollars has, has rolled in. So we go back to the question that I laid out at the beginning of this presentation. Does option number two address any of the concerns presented by MCEA? It addresses the compression issue brought on through TSIA implementation. It addresses the retention and recruitment by rewarding teachers for years of service that they have and they bring to the district. That's a testament to you, Mr. Raymond. You can use that as a, as a recruiting tool, right? And it increases the district's average salary due to, re to the recurring base salary increases via the yes adjustment. And it begins to close the gap between cost of living and average salaries. And finally, it makes Martin County competitive with comparable districts. And I, I want to stand on, on, on that part. It makes us competitive with comparable districts. I'm not going to go out on, on the limb and say it makes us number one. The numbers that I was crunching, it, 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 it doesn't, based upon my, my knowledge, it doesn't make us number one. It makes us competitive, and, and I can go on, on record and say it makes us competitive. Does it make us number one? I, I don't think so. so. Let me show you the reasons why. So when we look at, at this proposal, years one to two, in Indian River gets an increase of $500 to the base salary, right? So multiply one times 85 for this district's proposal. So you get $85 for year one, right? And then 85 times two for the, for the next year. So what's that, 170? So years one, you're getting 500 in Indian River. Year two, you're getting another 500 where in this school district, we're getting 85 and then 170. So automatically, when this starts applying to the base salaries next school year, would we be able to successfully say that we're number one when we're only increasing our base salary in, in one to two into three by $85 and they jump to 500? Years three to eight is, is 900. So year three through eight, all gets a $900 increase to their base salary. I want to explain this because we put a lot of thought into this. So it, it's not as if we didn't play devil's advocate with each other and, and, and manipulate these numbers. Five hours of, of straight plugging numbers in to, to come up with this with the system. So when you get to nine, nine to 15, you're getting $1,000 every year. So nine times, in, in this bracket, our employees have to get to 12 years of experience before they crack the $1,000 threshold. <coughs> years 9, 10, and 11 in Indian River are all getting $1,000 increases to their base salary, not 9 and 15 in, uh, well, 9 and 12 in Martin County. Once we get to 
12 years of experience, then you get to 1,020. And then 16 plus is 1,200. We, we get a little jump on the veteran teachers because our veterans are capped out at, at 3,000. So can I go on record and say that option two makes us competitive? Yes. <laughs> can I go on record and say that option two makes us number one in the treasure coast? No, nah, I can't say that. And we have a responsibility that if we have a tentative agreement that we're, sending a t we're signing off on a tentative agreement, endorsing our members to vote yes in the ratification process. So that means that I want to be completely clear and transparent with us. Does it put us on a trajectory in the right direction? Yes. Does it make us number one? I don't think so, but that's all right. We don't have to be, be number one in the first session. All that we were looking for is taking steps in the right direction and not taking steps back making it harder to catch up to everyone else. So to, to close, MCA can agree that option number two is the fastest way to address the issues that we raised. And what we're establishing as the yes adjustment is a proven pathway towards closing the gap between average salary and the cost of living for Martin County. And the reason why I'm saying that it's a proven way, a proven pathway, because we're on that trajectory in um, Indian River. And I think that if we apply that same logic that we're applying in Indian River here in Martin County, we could begin to reverse all of those obstacles that I laid out in the objectives at the beginning of, of our, our proposal. So when we look at the best and final offer, which uh, I'm saying is, is the first and only, we have a responsibility to ask ourselves whether or not we take, because just for education purposes, if a best and final offer is placed on the table, the next step is impasse. There's no countering a best and final offer. Well, at least that's what, what my training has, has um, taught me. A best and final offer is, is, is pretty much a gauntlet. So I respect that the, be the best and final offer at least borrows a framework um, from one of our, our contracts that's actually working successfully. The only negative part is that I truly wish that the school district would have placed this proposal down much earlier so we could have had dialogue about it, talk about it, make comparisons to the other school districts. Maybe it would have been beneficial to increase it to $90 instead of 85 to, to um, give us a little bit of relief in that 9 to 12 bracket. But the best and final offer means that we're accepting their offer or we're declaring impasse. If we declare impasse, that means that in front of a magistrate, I would have to justify that placing all of this money into a one-time pay for performance um, proposal is better than placing that money into a recurring increase to the base salary. So that's what we're looking at. We're not looking at an opportunity to throw more money on the table because that would be regressive bargaining. We have to look at our proposal, the last proposal that we placed, and then option number two, and find out which one accomplishes our goals more if we should present this in impasse. And, and we can say that option number two um, actually is, is the fastest way to address the issues that we, we raised. I had a conversation with um, a 15, uh, well, it was an a email back and forth with a 15-year employee, uh, employee in the district. They were encouraging us to reject this, uh, encouraging me to talk to our bargaining team to reject this option number two. And they said that it doesn't take care of our, our veteran teachers. The disconnect with that person um, who was a 15-year veteran is that they weren't calculating the yes supplement correctly. So um, they multiplied their years of service by 15, and they looked at it as a one-time payment. And then all they would get the next year until they retire is $85. That's what they believe is, is the recurring um, number, $85. $85 is not the recurring. 85 is the multiplier. Your 85 is the figure that you're multiplying by your years of service every year, not just one year. So if you want to find out what you're making the next year, just multiply your years of service by 85. You're going to get that number, and then you're going to increase it by 85 next year. The whole sum, you're going to increase that whole sum. So when we're looking at a 10-year employee, first year you're getting 850. The next year you're getting, what, 930? 
935, and then year number three, you're getting 1020. So that's, all of those are increases to your base salary. So it's very, very important that we understand why we're saying yes to that, because having that in place is, is much better than having to come back to the table and negotiate figures on pay for performance. It worked in Indian River. It's um, working in, in um, Okeechobee, and I think that it will definitely work here. Um, Martin County is the only contract that I work with that doesn't have some form of an experience credit, right, um, on, on, a, on a yearly basis as an increase to your base salary. With this proposal, now we match all of the other districts in the Treasure Coast. We're having something that we can look forward to, increasing our base salary on a yearly basis. So the, the last thing that I want to close with is I, I encourage all of us to, to do better. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I am, I am the common denominator with respect to, to um, these contracts. When I was telling you about my conversation with the interim superintendent in Okeechobee County this morning, he said, hey, Gary, you remember that year that we got finished in one night? I said, yeah, I remember the year we got finished in, in one night. He said, when, you, when you're talking in your presentation today, make sure to put on record that not one year since we were dealing with TSIA did we not have our contract settled by the October deadline. Every year, I told him, thanks for reminding me of that, but it's, it's very much so true. Every year we were able to negotiate our terms of pay raises, um, retention supplements, as well as the TSIA dollars all before October in these other, in these other districts. And I'm challenging this district um, to, to, to do better. We could have gotten to this, this point in the road a very long time, but we wasted four months of, of putting proposals on the table that you absolutely knew that the union was not going to um, agree to. So to, to wrap this, this up, Option two is, is the fastest way to address the issues um, we raised. Never thought that, that um, Martin County would consider the, the route that we took in, in Indian River, and it was a pleasant surprise that that was um, the pathway. And if there was an opportunity to have um, discussions um, at the table, then the district would have had a sense of, of idea of where MCA was leaning at with respect to this proposal. And I'm saying all that to say, that all of those videos in which we were being disparaged and, and slandered and, and accused of dragging out negotiations, all of that was absolutely not necessary because I'm a living witness that we can get to true collaboration and deals in record time if we just be transparent and upfront with each other. Like what I, my issue to the school board for the next bargaining session is come with your ideas because your, the, the, the respectful part is, is that we all have ideas of what's best for our bargaining unit. Like, don't come with a proposal that's just easy on the pockets. Like, when we have this conversation, let's talk about what's the school board's vision for the employees in this school year. What's your vision? What do you want to accomplish in this? Not just, oh, well, we have one, we have one million and fifty dollars on the table, and this is what we're going to do with it because this swallows up all. Carter's one of the smartest finance guys that I've worked with, private sector or public sector. All I'm saying is, is like, let's have a, a, a focused conversation and address what the district's priorities are. Because if the district have priorities that the union maybe haven't considered or thought about, then we can have useful, productive dialogue around those, those points. But it would be very, very advantageous to everyone in this process is if we put our best foot forward from the very beginning and not wait until we're five months into this process to give a, a presentation or a proposal that's, that's worth having a conversation about. So that's my challenge to us next year. Can we get this done faster than, than the time frame that we've traditionally, traditionally um, had in, in, in Martin County, which is, is in the teens? Um, one year we went to 22 sessions. And it's, it's not fair to our employees. It's not, it's not fair to recruitment and retention because they can't advertise what the next year's salaries are. They can't advertise what summer school um, pay is going to be. We have to do better. And if, if um, there's a commitment from the school board to do better, there's absolutely a commitment from the union. I can follow the same model that has been successful with, with um, my dealings with 
Okeechobee and, and Indian River. There's a pathway to be collaborative and, and successful. All of those superintendents that I mentioned are right here with us every bargaining session. It's not, it, it's not someone giving their opinion of what's actually happening. Those, those superintendents are, are actively engaged in, in the dialogue and, and the conversations with respect to an agreement. And that's what we're asking you all here. If you, if you can't do that, then at least be honest about where we're at. Because what was being shared in those videos was, was more than disingenuous. And, and I'm just going to use that term on the record to, to be nice. But I'm going to leave with this, um, an adage my, my grandmother um, told me is that the truth tastes real good when you had a belly full of lies. So I'm here to, to, to clarify the, the record. What was being said to you wasn't, wasn't truthful. I went through a timeline of what the district's proposals were up to the point where we got to option number two. And I'm super happy that they included option number one along with option number two because when we were considering whether we were going to accept this proposal or not, option number one gave me an idea of what the, the board really is. And that the option one um, proposal and option two of, is, is what we can be. That's, that's, that's the potential of what we can do in a collaborative effort. Option one is just more of, of the same. I truthfully don't even know why option one was included on it because the 790 that's included in option one is included in option two. So to put option one up there, it just reminds me that how far apart we were and that the district wasn't hearing us. Option two is more like we're hearing what you're saying. We can't do everything that you're asking for, but at least we can take a couple steps in the right direction. And that's the part that, that I respect. So I'm not going to be um, angry and bitter and, and disparage the, the school district. I'm saying that in the framework of things, option number two answers the compression. It answers um, getting our, our veteran teachers a little bit uh, more money. It gives us a recurring uh, supplement that we can depend on year in and, and year out. So we're going to agree to um, we're going to agree to option number two um, and and try to settle this this contract. So um, thank you for your for your time and opportunity to present. Ready? I am. You can, okay. Um, again, this is my first session here today. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I was mistaken. I said it was 14. This is 13. Um, and that was definitely unique. Um, 
w the, the salient points that I heard was want us to do better, encourage us to do better, um, that you didn't want to come here angry, bitter, and disparage the district. The problem is a lot of that was just that. It was criticizing the school board, criticizing the superintendent, mm -hmm. criticizing this team at this table that, again, haven't been here for sessions one through 12. Mm -hmm. We all have differences. We all have views of things. And as I said in my opening when I started today, it was good to see everybody again, um, hoping that we could make some progress. And it sounds like we did on the financial part. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the first 20 minutes of that was for my benefit, but I hope wish we could have avoided that. That was yeah, I, I did too. Because truth, let me finish, and yeah, then right. I won't interrupt you. Okay. I promise. Um, it, it, it's March, and so I don't think the three months prior to, um, if the goal is to encourage us to do better. I don't think that helps. I respect your opinion. You're allowed to feel the way that you feel. Mm -hmm. I just don't think um, referring to the superintendent as being disingenuous is helpful to this process. Yep. Having said that, again, I'll wait. Um, we're supposed to be here to bargain and I hope that's what we can do moving forward. That's my goal here at this table is to bargain with you and to have discussions with you and to hopefully make progress on these things. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do hope that both sides take your suggestion of encouraging us to do better moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, so before I move on, it sounded like you wanted to say something and I, I don't want to cut you off. I do want to say something, Terry. And, and what I want to say is on the 27th, after the district made this proposal, that presentation that I just showed to you was only three slides. It was only three slides. It was doing a comparison of options number one and options number two. And I communicated to the district through you, Terry, that these videos aren't helping this process. So I'm a little perturbed that we go on the record and we say what I did was counterproductive, but yet it was two videos put out by the superintendent Maine since we were at the bargaining table. When I'm saying that it's disingenuous is because he mentioned in that video that MCEA was delaying getting a deal done. When you weren't here, Terry, so in the last bargaining session, I explained on this record at the last session that I have obligations because we're always understanding when your previous chief negotiator had trials um, during the weeks that we wanted to, to bargain. We never once disparaged the district because their chief negotiator had other commitments. That was the only situation that we experienced here. And I said on the record that despite the fact that we can't come to the table the week of the 18th, what we would do is spend that time being productive and getting this ESY um, MOU ratified so that we can be productive in the meantime. You can go back to last bargaining sessions record and listen to it for yourself. And then this video comes out and says that the union is refusing to meet earlier than the date we have on the books. That, sir, is by definition disingenuous because he knew as well as your team members knew why we couldn't come to the bargaining table on the 18th. And they knew that our previous bargaining sessions were scheduled on the same date that our, um, our school board workshops were taking place. That's the reason why we didn't have those sessions because they were only on Tuesdays the same time that the board meetings were taking place. So I stand behind everything that I said in that statement and I wouldn't have had to say half of it if we bargained at the table and not on videos and sending it because truth be told, yeah. truth, truth be told Terry, that we could make an argument that that's direct dealing and which is an unfair labor practice. We could definitely make an argument for that. The second aspect of it is the surface bargaining um, degree of it. 
if for those that don't know, surface bargaining is putting a proposal on the table that you know that the other side isn't going to agree to. You just put it on the table for the sake of saying that you're negotiating. So when we put our proposal on the table and you guys didn't even take our proposal back to the school board and, and express what our concerns and what our interests were at the bargaining table, all you did was just replace it. So when I'm saying that we can do better, I, I choose to, to, to um, rephrase that. What, if we want to catch up with the other districts in the Treasure Coast with respect to pay and salary, let's catch up with them with respect to collaborative um, bargaining to get the best outcome for, for the bargaining unit members because when you look at it, Martin County is clearly the outlier when, when it comes to, to bargaining. So like I said, I'm at, I'm at um, the table of four of the eight contracts that's negotiated in, um, in, in the Treasure Coast and none of them take as long as it takes for, for this process. So to have, um, to have the superintendent put out those videos and make these accusations, I'm well within my rights to, to determine whether that's disingenuous or, or is it fact. There's only one proposal that the district made that actually takes care of the veterans, that addresses compression, that adds to the base salary. It was only one. And that proposal was placed on the table at the end of February. So all of the previous five months, we were light years apart when it comes to what the needs of our bargaining unit members or our bargaining unit members are. So I'm sorry that you feel that way, but that frustration comes, and, and, and I, I told you that when we had our, our, our conversation that those videos aren't helping. It's confusing people. It's vilifying the union when we come to the table every bargaining session ready to make a deal and the authority and ability to TA on any, on any proposal that comes across the table. You guys do not come with that authority. So not coming to the table with authority, surface bargaining, direct dealing with your, with, with your bargaining unit members, we all know that those are fall under bad faith practices and are grounds for unfair labor practice. But we didn't even pull that out. What we did was we came here, challenged you all to do better, and let's continue to, to beat not only these other school districts in, in salaries and benefits, let's beat them with the time that it takes for us to finish these contracts. Gary, my point in what I said, which I'm not sure it, it, it came across well, is if, or if you got the point of it, I'm not, I don't think the bargaining session is the place to spend 20 minutes disparaging the other side, which you're still doing by throwing allegations of bad faith, direct dealing. I want to move forward with you at this table, and I appreciate I do appreciate your insight when you went through the two proposals and you explained this is why this one doesn't cut it for us. I, I appreciate that. Be critical of proposals, absolutely. Um, that was what I was trying to get at was I would like to see us moving forward focus on our proposals, the issues that we have with the language that's proposals, your criticism of the offers because you think it should be, that's fine but I will not sit here and throw those things back at you, and I'm hoping we can avoid that. That's the point of what I was trying to get across. I'm not questioning that you have a right to be upset or a right to have I'm, an opinion. I'm not upset. I just think that I have a right to respond. So, so the thing is, is that these conversations about these proposals are supposed to take place at the table, Correct. not, not the, in the manner in which your superintendent did over the past couple of weeks. So we're talking about bargaining and we're not at the bargaining table. So what you're saying is that uh, as the chief negotiator of, of MCEA, that, it's, that the expectation is for me to sit back and allow these things that just simply aren't true to just be said without having any kind of response to it? Because I wouldn't have to respond if these comments were made at the bargaining table. You put your position in your proposal down. Good faith bargaining is waiting for the other side to respectfully respond to your proposal, not to begin disparaging before you even knew what angle we... So on the 28th, the day after our presentation, we knew how we were going to respond to this, to this proposal. So what was the use of all of that that was, that was um, spewed out in, in those videos? Gary, the superintendent has a right to speak about the facts of bargaining. But it wasn't facts. That's why I said that's that. That's your view. It wasn't, it wasn't facts, Terry. That's what the problem is. Those, those were not 
Those were not facts. Those, so we're, we're hearing facts from someone who's not even in these bargaining sessions. Again, I, this is now the third time I want to say it. I respect you have a right to voice your displeasure. When I show up at a bargaining session, I would like to focus on bargaining, not criticizing the board, criticizing the superintendent. You want to criticize the offers and so the approach? don't criticize us, Terry. I'm so, not so criticizing you, not, you right now, am I? I'm not I'm saying, just saying you, I would like Terry. I'm Go not ahead. saying you. What I'm saying is that the videos that came out since the last time the board made their proposal has been disparaging. You were talking about the union not agreeing to dates that we were delaying, that it's timelines associated with with the, the retention stipend. We put that retention stipend down in November. You guys responded to it in February. So why aren't we talking about the 12 week delay that we waited? It's not as if we came to the bargaining table and didn't have an answer for you. We didn't have a bargaining session. So how can I respond to a proposal if we don't have a bargaining session in which to respond to? Just like you sat here and accused some of those videos of being direct dealing, mm -hmm. I respectfully disagree with you. And there may be some things on that video that you disagree with me on. I just don't want to spend our time at the table continuing to do what we're doing. Well, I had an obligation to address my I, bargaining and I, I'm members saying going and forward, to clarify the record. I, going forward, and I think that's why I said when you got to going through the financial proposals, that I appreciated the insight. You know, it's, it's sometimes if it's just yes, no, doesn't help us move forward, right, and understand each other's positions. And so when you explained the option one versus the option two, and you took through why option one is not acceptable to us, why it does not work for us, why option two is something that is a step in the right direction from you, helpful. And so, again, I'm here on session 13. Um, I can't speak to sessions one through 12. You can, I can't, I'm not gonna try to correct you on it. Yeah. But we are where we are. I've worked with you many times before at this table. I think I sat in that seat the last time. Mm -hmm. And so on a moving forward basis, if we're at a good spot in terms of the financial spot, or in terms of the financial proposal as it relates to option two, I think it would be helpful to go forward and maybe address some of the language that's outstanding um, if you think that's a good shift at this time. Unless you have anything else to say, I'm not gonna ever cut you off. I just, I wanted you to understand my goal. Right, and, and again, I, I, respect, I respect your position, but I sit here in session number 13 as a participant in all 12 prior to. And what I'm saying is, if we wanna step in the right direction, what you're suggest suggesting have to go both, both ways. We can't put the union in the box and say, oh, you're disparaging the school board, you're disparaging the superintendent. Find, like I, I've, I've received emails from people in the community that respect the way that I come to this table and, and work with, with the district. But when we take a step out of bounds, like, like what was taking place over the last couple of weeks, I'm going to respond to that, to that, Terry, because I told you prior to today that it was counterproductive, that it doesn't help, that let's deal with this situation at the table. And then lo and behold, that was on Friday. Lo and behold, on Monday is yet another, another video. And, and I, I couldn't be more clearly when we had the conversation how that's not helping the situation. So if you're telling me what's not helping the situation and what you expect, I did the same thing and then got exactly what I called you about on Monday. So we had this conversation on, on, on Friday, and then on Monday, the very same thing happened. So what I'm going to commit to you is like, yes, we're going to bargain, but every time I come to this microphone, I'm going to do right by the bargaining unit members in this district. The board's position is not my concern. If you guys want to take the low road, I'll go right on the low road with you. But everybody knows that the, the, um, that, that the, the record or, or the, the position that, that comes before me is that I am collaborative. Have your school board call those other counties and, and ask what it's like 
to deal with me at the bargaining table, how productive, collaborative, and how fast we get it done. I just don't understand why that doesn't translate into this school district. So it's safe after four years of, of going through this bargain. It's not me, Terry. It's not me because my work, I showed our work on, on, on the screen today. It's not me. So I understand and appreciate what you're saying, but that, that's not us. We come here every bargaining session trying to get this work done. So that's all. If, if what the superintendent says can only be based upon what's being understood as is taking place at this bargaining table. And I've not one time have I disparaged anybody at this bargaining table. I quoted in, in um, my theory that Carter's one of the smartest number guys that I've worked with in the 18 years that I've been bargaining union contracts. It, it's no disparaging in here, and I have a great working relationship with everybody at this, at this bargaining table, a great one. I just don't understand why the work that we do all through the academic year doesn't translate to the bargaining table. That's my only question. Why doesn't it translate to the bargaining table? I just, so, again, we're I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Uh, you've got it. I just don't want to sit here. Can, I can go tit for tat with you for the next two and a half hours. It's not productive. So I'd like to, if we can, transition. If you're in, it, it, unless you need to take a break or your team wants to take a break to talk. We good to go, Terry. Let's okay. go. I think, let me see. Yeah, the dates that we had agreed to probably. Yeah, yeah hold on. Mm -hmm. And so if this is a little disjointed, you got to give me one session to, to get it collected as it relates to language items, because I've got a list of language items here. You, you got it. And, and, um, and I don't know if they provided you with the agenda. I do. I so, just want so you to. you have the agenda from last week? I mean, the last bargaining session? Yeah, and I've let's, got. Let's operate off of that document. OK. That's the same one that we have. And they'll keep everything, everything tight. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. I got my notes on there. So Oh, they do. Yeah, I was trying to see what's, from what I understood is open. Open where there's not been a yes or a no articulated. Yeah, I got it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I did. So, Gary, what, what I'll do is I can just list them all out for you if you want to scribble them down. This is what our understanding is what is open, mm -hmm. where there's perhaps a response that we're waiting on. Mm -hmm. I've got Article 4, payroll deduction. Yes. Article 7.2, voluntary transfer. Yes. Article 11 on leave. Yes. Uh, committees. Yes. Uh, the board on the SLP proposal, the last proposal. Correct. The, okay. And then um, the ESY MOU. Correct. That's... Um, oh, and then there's one additional item that we were going to talk about um, after after I do this. I'd like you, if you want to list what you think that we may owe you something on um, the millage. Um, okay. I think we'll also want to talk about a placement over. schedule as well. Right. To present that to you. Yes. And then as it relates to um, the salary proposal for purposes of option two, is that something we'd like to draw up and TA on tonight? That's correct. Okay. So do you want to just start with going down the order? Is that best for you? Sure. Again.
find it. You want to start with Article 4? Yep. Payroll deduction? Yeah. You just want to go through each one of them if you have language to propose today. Does that make the most sense to you? Yes. Um, one. Okay. I, I would rather do it do it one by one. I think this is the only the only one that we're initiating a, a counter proposal on. So when you're you're ready. Yeah. Give me about thirty seconds. Sure. Computer doesn't work as fast as I want it to, oh, so I apologize. We, we experienced that. Know, Take your time. I had it loaded up and then it shut off. I guess my question is, just the initial question on it, um, is if it's if the dues deductions, payroll deductions, is, is currently prohibited by Senate Bill 256 and there's no language in the bill that speaks to a sunsetting of it or of any expectation that it's going to be reversed, why would we want to keep language in the contract that is inconsistent with the law our proposal isn't keeping the language in the contract Terry I mean it's are you just saying we don't from what I'm reading though you're saying you do not agree to the removal of the provision right FEA has and always will take the, the stance that 
this legislation is unconstitutional. We preserve our, our, our rights to challenge this um, negotiation, I mean this uh, Senate bill in the court system and we're doing that. So with, with respect to it, it just acknowledges that we're removing it out of the contract. It's the same approach that we used in, in, um, in Indian River and, and um, Okeechobee. So all we're stating is that we don't agree with the removal of the provision. And we acknowledge that this payroll deduction is a result of Senate Bill 256. Should we be successful in any kind of, of appeals, um, in, in our appeals rights, then we would like for this language to re revert back. And, and, th and then frankly, this is, this language was, was created in, in um, the beginning of the school year in, in Okeechobee. And all of this, this process for collecting dues was brand new for, for the union, I'm not going through payroll deduction. I'm saying all that to say this, Terry, is that we're, we're putting that in to, to protect our own interests, but it's been going pretty good not getting money deducted from, from, the, school, from the school board. So even if there is a, a challenge, the likelihood that we'll convert back to payroll deductions from the district is very, very, very unlikely. So I'm, I'm going through the advisement of, of my legal counsel, and that's the only reason why we're, we're putting in it, is just for, for um, protections. But the likelihood that, that we would seek to return to payroll deductions should this Senate bill be deemed unconstitutional is very, very unlikely. Just it, my concern would be, are we going down a path of making contingent provisions on the law changing, which I know what you're saying is it's not, but it, it essentially says if the law changes, we're going to revert back to something that's currently impermissible. That's what I'm interpreting that as. And, and what do you mean currently impermissible? Can't do payroll deductions the way that we used to do it because of 256. Right. It's just saying if that changes, we're going to agree to revert back to the way we're doing it. We did it pre-256. Well, right? well, if it changes, then that means that Senate Bill 256 was deemed unconstitutional, so that provision would no longer be illegal now, would it? If it was deemed unconstitutional, correct. Right, right now, it's legal. Right. So that's why we say we agree. MCA does not agree to the removal of the provision, and the parties acknowledge that payroll deduction was removed from the contract as a result of Senate Bill 256. Mm -hmm. We're acknowledging that. Right. So it's, it, it's acknowledging that this removal is due to the Senate bill. To the extent of the subsequent reversal of the dues deduction restriction legislation, a court determination that the dues deduction restriction is unconstitutional or otherwise invalid or unenforceable, or a determination that the dues deduction restriction is un unconstitutional or otherwise invalid, unenforceable as applied to the contract entered into prior to the passage of the law, the parties agree that the contract will revert back to the language in place of, uh, as, of as of today, 326-24. So we're striking this out. Should we be successful? I don't think that it, it's um, productive to have to argue to, to put it back in. If it was deemed constitu unconstitutional, why can't it just be placed back in? And as I stated before, there's no guarantee that we'd even be interested in, in, in doing that. This payroll deduction um, self-collection has been going pretty good. It's been going pretty, pretty good. Okay. Um, we'll discuss that as a group. Do you want to keep going through the remaining article? Sure. Thank you. Okay. And thank you for explaining it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it does help to understand. Yeah, and, and for um, just, just for, for purposes of clarity, have your school board reach out to the school board in, in Okeechobee. It's the same, same terms. If nothing changes, then it, it just remains out of the, the contract. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um. <coughs> hmm? But on that, I'll just tell you, if, if there's an appetite for that, it'll be the team at the table that'll be presenting that to you. Tonight? No, I'm saying if there's an appetite for reviewing what other boards do or don't oh, okay. do, this team at the table will have a proposal for you. Okay. 
Um, okay, we're on number s Article 7, I, uh, point 2.2, point E, voluntary transfers. Yep. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Did you hand it out? Because article there seven. Was, there was nothing to hand out. Oh, you're just oh. rejecting it? No, nah, we have a conversation. Discussion okay, I'm so it. sorry. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were getting your papers together. I was. No, I was I'm sorry. You guys were writing and chatting. I was waiting for you. Oh no! I thought you were passing, you were passing, passing out papers. papers. We oh no! We had a brief moment. <laughs> nah, it's, it's okay. Sorry it's, about it's that. Totally, I just wanted to respect, just in case you had the I, sidebar. So there, there's a couple of things in this in, in this um, article. I want to start with the easiest first. And that's under um, 7.2F. 7.2F in the last sentence in, in that section of the article, we're doing cosmetic change and we're doing um, assistant superintendent of human resources in place of the title chief of human resources. Uh, MCA has no issues with the change in, in F. But then we have to have some conversation because um, with, with E, w w in case we're, we're missing something, this language was just bought up if it wasn't last year, the, the year before. And um, we, we moved it to, to June, and then now we're striking, striking that, that June part out. And um, after having conversations with, with my team, th they have no appetite to entertain a change in, in 7.2 E, but we're willing to accept the changes in 7.2 F. And I have that noted as TA on last session, E and F, article. No. Which one are you talking about? Oh, it, it oh voluntary oh, transfers. Yeah. You're Seven. still on that. Okay. Yeah, voluntary yeah. transfer. Okay. Yeah, because I, I was about sure. to say, um, we, we had strong <laughs> opinions from our, our bargaining team and our caucus about, about that. We definitely didn't TA on, on that one. Well, you were saying e and F. So it was yes on F. F. Yes on F, because that's a cosmetic change. We understand yeah. that titles change so this um this proposal is is a cosmetic change but we think that the changes that are proposed for 7.2 e would do more harm to our bargaining unit members than it would do good um please f feel f freely to speak because I, I think changing that window would also do more harm to our re recruitment and retention as well because if, if someone who wants a first grade teaching position can't switch to the one in another Martin County School District school, but they have one available in St. Lucie or Palm Beach or Okeechobee or Indian River, they might consider going there because there's not a whole lot keeping them here. So I think that changing that transfer window would do detriment to the district as well. Yeah, the, the counter to that, and your decision has already been made from a principal's perspective when the teammate leaves in the month of June, the odds of filling the position become ex extremely harder. So I, I yeah, it's hard at the school site, I believe. Right. I believe that it's hard at the school site, right. but I, I'm looking more globally at the district. Uh, understood, and, and yeah. twofold. And the other piece of the lens was um, the district used to not open um, new positions for the upcoming year until I would say some years late April. So now positions were open in, in March, March 11th. So the spirit was for school sites. Um, to not be in a position to not fill a position, um, but we respect your. How no. many how many positions are open right now, posted? Are there many? There's. Are you asking what's currently posted yeah. on the instructional board? positions that are currently being posted that teachers that want to transfer could actually consider? 
problem in answering the question is some teachers in our district may be planning on leaving and they're not and haven't told us. Yeah. <laughs> so I, we know. It, that's, it's, that's it's, a, it's a question mark number. So that's the my problem. My recruitment and retention yeah. is having a very clear number of what is our need for the upcoming year. That's the problem I, with I changing the transition in terms of wanting more time. So, so moving it to June, how does that benefit um, the retention effort? So, so it, it's been June ever since I was a principal for the last 12 years, as far as I can recall, that the voluntary transfer window was the last day of June. Our proposal was to push it up to the last day of May. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be July. You don't I, recall it being July? July? I, I do not ever yeah. recall it being in July. <laughs> I, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always remember it as the last working day in June. And this proposed change was to push it up by a month because the post things were to come up at least a month early. So how does keeping it in um, in June a, a detriment to recruitment um, and retention? Yeah. Because I, the, the, retention from recruitment. for for recruitment, because I, I want to 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 give you this caveat, um, Mr. Raymond. Is like I don't want you to just say well, you, your mind is made up already. It's, we're open to, to discussion from, from the surface when we looked at it, we couldn't see the benefits of it, but we're definitely open to hear your point of view before we finalize our, our decision on it. So please ed educate because we look at it from the scope of, of our bargaining unit um, and, and the impact that it would, would cause our bargaining unit. But if there's an opportunity to have a, a deeper discussion, I value understanding what the other side's positions are. Like that's what I was saying at the at, at the podium. I want to give your proposal the respect that it deserves instead of just giving you a. Uh, I'd rather give you a slow no than a uh, than a fast no, right? So please inter yeah. entertain. <laughs> truly, truly, it stems from a historical perspective as, as the principal. The later someone leaves your team, the harder it is to fill a position in the summer. Ideally, uh, districts have uh, their big recruitment fairs, uh, some as early as March, some in April. Um, the top talent is recruited in the earlier months. So when you get to the month of June and a great teammate leaves you, the odds of suddenly finding someone becoming increasingly difficult if the talent is not suddenly appearing. Um, so from a recruitment lens, it's just you attempt to attract and um, retain your team as early as possible for the upcoming school year. And, and I'm definitely not trying to be um, facetious, but how does getting to the point where we know what our salaries are going to be has to do with, with the ability to recruit people in the time frame that's currently indicated in, in the contract. So, because that's what our th thought process is. If we can get to an agreement faster and then you can advertise the new, um, the new salary for the new year, we can advertise what summer school pay, et cetera, et cetera, is going to be, how would that impact keeping it in June? Um, what I would share tonight's tentative agreement will be very helpful from a recruitment lens to, to provide a clear number of Here's how much you can make in the Mark Ken School District based upon X number of years. Though this is about the transfer window. As the principal, I want to know who's on my team for the upcoming year. Um, when someone leaves in the middle of the summer, and I view June as the middle of the summer, it just becomes harder to replace the person. Um, but tonight, there's progress in terms of now I have a number mm -hmm. I can share with any possible um, candidate, whether they're um, external or internal. Right, and, and that definitely went, went into our, our consideration for option number two as, as well. The, the, the benefits of, of, of that proposal wasn't, wasn't lost on us, and, and as I stated in my, in, in my presentation, we was, I personally was super happy that um, the districts wanted to even entertain that as a, as a means towards the, the huge goal that we have in, in getting our, our salary schedules a little bit equitable because of the TSIA. But I appreciate your insight. Team, do you guys have any other questions with respect to um, the volunteer transfer? We're, we're going to give your, um, your points of consideration when we go into our, our caucus, and we'll give you our final answer 
at, at the caucus. Thanks for um, indulging us with your question, with your um, position. Hey, Jeff, your uh, transfer portal might be something that you want to explain just to enlighten. Yeah. Enlighten them on how you're at, um, enhancing the process for teachers to interview to transfer. Sure. Um, so today, I think teachers may have received a memo, or maybe you'll get it next week. Um, but to try to expedite the transfer process, um, taking a play on the NCAA, um, created a transfer portal. And essentially, any teacher in the district that is interested <laughs> in transferring to another Martin County School District site, um, you can record a um, one-way interview. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first questions in the interview asks, um, what schools are you interested in? As soon as I get the email with that interview, I then furnish the interview to the principal. So from the comforts of your home, you can do the interview um, and save a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So it's just uh, trying to take a play on something that's popular in, uh, in our sports culture and bring it to the market. <laughs> so it's so the process of transfer. So, so, NIL deal, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I was waiting. That, that was my, my question. My question was going to be if they do enter the transfer portal, would they have the red shirt a year <laughs> before they could teach? But, oh, yeah, I, I think that that's an interesting concept. And, and again, we, we want to, we pride ourselves on, on taking the time and, and giving the um, proposals the, the proper um, consideration that, that it deserves. So, uh, again, uh, I kind of know what uh, our team members are going to say, but I still want to give um, the proposal and the, and the explanation of uh, the courtesy that it deserves and speak to our speak to that in our, our caucus. And maybe things can change and may, maybe not, but I do want to give it the, the um, proposal that it, it deserves. I mean, the consideration that it deserves, excuse me. Okay. Then I've got, Gary, I've got an article same article 7, um, 4C, and I think they probably run similar, 4C and 8, dealing with committee-related uh, committee language. Yes. So I think the only thing that we were, we were not certain about was, was um, the, the very, very last one, which is eight. the supplement committee removal. Because um, in, in the last discussion, and Terry, I'll just recap with you. I know you weren't here, and um, it, it, in case you didn't review that that session. Oh. Yeah, Gary, I may have skipped two on you. Yeah. All right. Do you want to just tackle that one and move yeah, backwards? Yeah, I've got 7.2, and then I thought, and maybe I've got Article four, or Article 7, Section 4C, and 7. Point eight as a proposal that was last made by us on March 6th that upon request of either party a committee shall be formed was the last communication on that right okay mm -hmm. so there was a response in my am I right on that yes okay and that, that's what I was clarifying the only thing that we didn't have clear understanding on was the very very last section part of, under J which is um, Number nine, the supplement committee removed. Yeah, so with, with respect to Jay and, and all of the other committees, MCA expressed that we, we have um, no, no problem requesting um, to the superintendent that, that a committee can, shall be formed. So if, if that's if that's the route that that we want to propose to take it's, it's very easy on our on our side to, to make that communication meaning you would the the language upon request of either party a committee shall be formed mm -hmm. you're comfortable with that we're, we're comfortable with that and, and the reason being for the record Terry is because there's no sentence that that comes after that that requires um the board or the superintendent to make a decision on it so we don't make this request and then we wait for a response do we want to um, have this committee do we not want to have this committee based upon this language all it requires is a request from either side and then that committee shall be formed and is that my correct interpretation of it yes yep, that's that was mine as well all right yep. I, would, I would just add 
we can't we can't agree to to an agenda. Um, we we need to see some some language with with proper strike throughs and additions, in in order to see and and show our members what it is that we'd be tentatively agreeing to. Um, so I, I I feel very uncomfortable checking off lists here, knowing that what we agree to in theory may not necessarily be what what the board's final draft is to us. So I would very much like to see just just like just like this one where there's proper strike throughs and, and underscores um, with with headings so we know who said what. Um, that that makes me feel a whole heck of a lot more comfortable agreeing to that stuff. Anything else on that one? No, I think that's all. Okay. Matt, can I ask a follow-up question? Mm -hmm. So in each portion of the contract within the CBA, you want us to add that sentence after where it says there should be, yeah, a, we'll there shall be? Is that what you're looking at? We'll put it together and bring it to Because it is you. listed on page 92 of the contract, every single committee, and it could be easily done by adding that sentence on that page 92. So we'll, we'll, what, we'll Yeah, what, whatever is the, um, the, the, all right, thanks, Sarah. No, 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 I, I, I hear what you're saying. Okay. And it, it again, my notes were just, I wanted to make sure we had a response to it. And if your response is yes, but we need to see the language to make sure it's a yes. Right. I got it. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Then I've got article 11. On the leave. Yeah. Let me go to that. <laughs> Page 47, there, maybe. In the book? Yeah. Yeah, it's on yeah. page 47. Yeah. Such a great student, Dan. I'm the one that can't find any of his notes in class or the lecture the previous day. Thanks so much for being so organized. So I just wanted to have a little bit of discussion about um, Article 11, because I know that, and, and please correct me if, 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 I'm, um, if, if I'm not accurate on here, but with this proposal, did we, we, we move some things around for flow, right? Yes. Yeah, because I did a, a, a comparison, but this comparison was on Saturday, and I looked at so much contract language between Saturday and, and now. I just wanted to make sure that my recollection is um, reflective of my notes. So outside of the cosmetic changes for the flow, the only changes in um, the paid leave language falls under 11.2 um, with donated sick leave, correct? The only changes for, for do what, yeah, the whole section, the whole? For the whole article would be found under 11.2 um, under donated sick leave? Um, I'm trying to find my, like, one we submitted to you. If, if I didn't have Dan next to me, I would have been looking to Julie, so take your time. Oh, five pages. Oh, I have that. That's why I can't find it. This is my whole February 27th <laughs> packet. I threw it out. Yeah, it's in the February 27th packet. Um, so with regard to, I'm going to look at that real quick. Um. Did you say sick leave? Because we have others. It's just the um the leave just provisions leave. article as a, as a whole, but the section that involved strike throughs would start in 11.2 oh. donated sick leave yes so i um this is the strike throughs but i believe if we went and compared word for word because she moved some things around mm -hmm. we may need to look at i can't tell you that this is the only strike through in this whole document oh well i, I looked through what was presented to okay. us and, and this appears to be the only strike throughs 
um, in the language. So when I received this proposal, it was with the understanding that we wanted to clean it up so it could flow a little bit better. Yes. And then there was some changes that we wanted, that the district wanted to propose with respect to the donated sick leave language. And I was reading through the strike throughs and trying to get an understanding of what the interpretation would be for this donated sick leave language when we implement the strike throughs. But prior to me making assumptions on what the school board's uh, goals and objectives are, I just wanted to have a discussion over uh, why are we proposing these strike throughs and what would be the benefits of, of striking through, through that. I just didn't want to respond without having the opportunity to discuss that. So one of the changes that happens when we do get to language is we update old language mm -hmm. when we have a chance to do that, right? Right. And what we have um, discovered, this was initially called Compassionate Leave Bank mm -hmm. on page 51 of the current contract. So the, um, the Compassionate Leave Bank has not been in place for some time. Typically what happens is if I'm sick and Sherry wants to donate time, that goes into a bucket for me necessarily, but if for me, but there is not like a district wide bucket for compassionate leave where you can donate it to anybody. That is the sick bank and that we can give eight hours and have up to 40 hours if we qualify for that. So there is not a compassionate leave bank where there's donating between other members of the district. If the teacher is going to be out in the school other teachers want to donate to that teacher there's a process and a task process in skyward and then payroll knows that julie has more sick leave to be able to take for a donation and this can happen if um, we have a member that has an extended illness and the school um, any member of the district and there is some statute with regard to how how that happens but we don't have a bank where payroll just keeps compassionate leave and Julie needs days, they send it to her. It's specific. And Carter, we're going over the changes to the compassionate leave bank on page 51. And um, we uh, changed it to donated sick leave because that's really what, what the process is that the dis district does now. There's no like large bank that you can just draw from. It's specific where I send something to payroll and say I'm giving Sherry days because mm -hmm. she's requested it. I mean, we've even had someone in the district um, give several like trying to, hey, I'm going to be out till April and the whole district gave, gave some money but it went right to that person's bank and then what happens with it if for some reason the person doesn't use all of it then it goes back into the um, it gets initially put in but if say they don't use them all it goes back to the donor so there's this is we wanted to outlay what the current process is mm -hmm. that we're utilizing with this so I'm happy to take any questions you might have and Carter can supplement me if there's something else because it does manage it's managed in his department in okay. payroll. Well, th thanks for taking the opportunity to explain that okay. to us because reading through it and looking at the strike throughs, I was, the first thing that, and just taking you a peek behind the, the curtains on, on our process, right? The first thing that we have to do is assess whether or not those strike throughs um, is going to result in a benefit of our bargaining unit being taken, taken away. So I wanted to make sure that we're striking out funds generated from payout of donated sick leave shall be deposited into the compassionate leave bank. You're saying that we're striking this language out because there isn't um, a compassionate leave bank that exists. There's a process for employees to donate their sick leave to coworkers and colleagues that need that through a process initiated in Skyward. Yes. So that deems this language as unnecessary. Am I following that correctly? Yes, sir. All right. So moving on to the next one. So donated leave days may be granted for catastrophic events, including serious illness or illness of someone as described in paragraph 11.2 above. So now we have donated sick leave days in a paragraph prior to that substitutes Compassionate leave, compassionate leave bank. So when we're looking at A, does the donated sick leave days that's being stricken that may be granted for catastrophic events, including serious injury or illness of someone as described in paragraph 11.2 above, is that um, eligible to, to be utilized in the manner that's spoken of in the first paragraph? Yes, I believe that's why we struck it. 
the, and the, a, the first sentence in A being basically redundant of the first sentence in the f J. Yes. And then we kept the language, the rest of the language in A. The first language in J. Yeah. Give me one second, Terry. Let me. You may have a different. Pick up what you're putting down. So that's that's kind of what I was about to say. I feel like I'm I'm losing at a really bad game of Where's Waldo here. Um, you've got the document that I'm working off of. We're talking about Article 11.2. Yeah, we have a J. Titled Donated Sick Leave, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I see the strike throughs that Gary's referring to. But when I go to the contract, Julie said it was on page 51. 51 mentions compassion and sick leave, but Article 11.2 is unpaging leaves. So are we, are we also changing compassion at leave bank to donated sick leave? Is yes, I'm sorry, I did mention okay. that so, at the so beginning. Not only are there a bunch of strike throughs here, but there needs to be, there needs to be a lot of underlining. So if, if we're talking in, in order to make sure that we're even remotely talking about the same thing, because it says the first paragraph, donated sick leave exists, and then the first line here, the compassionate sick leave, compassionate leave bank exists. So you've got some underscores and strength throughs there. I mean, this is this is not really an apples to apples comparison. Um, I see what I mean, we we could we could be here. This goes yeah. on for several pages. pages. Yeah. I mean, my, 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 my birthday ends at midnight. <laughs> uh, we're going to be a little past my birthday. Well, the uh, first. We're figuring this out if we want okay. to stay and do this line by line. Well, the first section is for paid leaves. So if you donate someone to someone, it's paid leave. So I heard you mention that the next section is unpaid leave. So this is paid leave where you right. don't so, have so any more sick time. Be, this becomes Article 11.2. And then Article 11.2 in the contract would then be Article 11.3. This actually is you're J. You're inserting a whole section in here. That, this would be J, Matt. Is J, which one would be J? It's, it's, yeah, it's J in the contract. It's J in the contract. But it's 11.2 on the handout. And that's where that's it's right. not. Jive it, we uh, shuffle the whole. So it's kind right. of yeah. mixing things up. Yeah. Um, just out of curiosity, while we're in there, it's the 11 point, what we're calling 11.2 on the handout, one, um, I'm not quite sure where it is. Oh, it's, on, it's one under B. Yeah, it's in the same place in the contract. We crossed out the leave payout shall be based on the current daily rate of pay of the employee multiplied by 80% of the value of the day um, and left nothing there. So so with that crossed out, then what is the payout based on? I guess that's what I'm curious about. What, from what I understand, what it is is what you're making. So you, okay, you so don't become. Okay, so it's not going to be the 80%. It's going to be it's gonna right, your so payout for the day. Yes, okay. so that you don't have any negative impact the okay. employee that needs the sick time. Okay. That's how we're currently administering it. That okay. If someone um, donates the sick leave to you, it's paid it's out at what, that I you, gave what you make. They need. What you make. Like if what it's I your, yes. Did. So that your compensation stays whole. It's whatever, it, if I'm receiving the leave, I am paid out that leave at my rate, yes. not the rate of the person who goes no. to the The person receiving it gets, yes. it gets their pay rate. Right. The recipient's, yeah. recipient's rate. Yes. 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 Yeah, that's what I was You're basically saying. made whole as the person receiving the donation for the okay. day. We attempted to keep most of the terms the same. The piece was that the compassionate bank, like for district-wide, yeah. doesn't exist anymore. It it's pretty, by person. It looks pretty similar. Yeah. Um, we just wanted it to quick, match what's quick, currently quick, happening. I didn't realize the numbers were different. I'm sorry, that's confusing. Yeah. You 
can see it. We just need to take, I think, if, if it's, and again, if there's a, I know there's a rewrite of more than just this, but to, yeah. Matt, to your question, it, um, it is, if this is intended to replace compassionate leave, bank, language, yes. then strike through and underline the compassionate leave, bank, language section of the contract and replace it with whatever our proposed language is in this Google document that you got in mm -hmm. February. Correct. Yep. Gotcha. It, it goes all the way back to Article 11.1 because there there are additions and changes made to to the paid leave section as well. Uh, paid leave doesn't match up either. It's fine. I mean, if, if you need a strike through, it. I mean, I would want the strike through, of course. Right, for anything so that is TA'd okay. on, but conceptually, uh, are you uh, saying? Let me take this. So, so Terry, looking at at um, paid leaves, the, the one that was presented yeah. in the last session, the last session, and I think it's the a testament to why what Matt is saying is so important. Because looking at this, I'm looking at paid leave um, under 11.1 uh, paid leave, yep. A number two. And A number two reads, absences in excess of five days in one month shall require verification of illness, including but not limited to a doctor's note. When misuse of sick leave is suspected, the superintendent or his or her designee may investigate and require verification of sick leave, including a doctor's note. Is that in our contract currently? I'm trying to follow what you're saying, but I don't. At least in four, on page 47, it's not on page 47. Yeah, that, that's the point that I'm making. This is in your proposal. What I'm reading is in your proposal, so. but it's not in our contract. So this should be underlined. The way that it's presented as if this, this addition, that absences in excess of five days in one month shall require verification of illness, including but not limited to a doctor's note, is a new language. But it's presented it as if it was in our contract already. So if we would have tentatively agreed to this on the surface, we would have been adding language that we had no idea was being added to our contract. Gary, hmm? Christine did mention she, there was sections she did not strike through. So if that's what you'd like us to go back and work on it where it stri would strike through the last session when she provided it, she said I moved stuff around, yeah, but she only did the strike through on that one section. There you go, Sherry. Yes. It's, a, it's an addition, so it should yeah. be underlined and it should be so, so the wage, like our, our proposal for, for um. I understand it. She just didn't do it that way. It was a lot. So. Yes, yeah, it, it just needs to be underlined. Okay, any, birthday any, boy. Yeah, any new language needs to be, um, underlined so it can be indicated as as new language. Okay, birthday boy. Mm -hmm. I thought a gift would be rewriting the leave sections at the table, but um, <laughs> no. I, and I think maybe not to speak for Christine, but it may be because it was such a substantial reorganization that it was presented for you to look at conceptually, but I hear what yeah, you're saying. And, that. and let the record be clear. I'm not making any accusations yeah, or get, anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not it. making any accusations. It's just that we noticed that that part is, is new language and it, it would need to be underlined yep. so that our, our members will know what, what they're ratifying. Yep, that makes that makes all the sense, all understood. Right. Thank you. So then we will come back at the next one with a strike through, even if it's gonna be, it, it, as I understand, a pretty substantial reordering. Mm -hmm. Try to strike through and underline to where it makes sense to you so that when you're looking at it, you can see what's being added, what's being subtracted. So we'll come back with that. Um, okay, I think we already covered committees. And I th covered committees. Yep. think that moved SLP, maybe? Mm -hmm. SLP, the last proposal from the district at the last session which was the $5,000 offer. We, we countered that on the 27th. On the 27th, it's countered. On the board. Yeah, the response to our counter. 
<laughs> yes, I have a copy for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's good. That's good, Sherry. Do you have a copy of that, um, Terry? Because I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. E understood. But I, I think our response to the the proposal change is that the five thousand dollar offer is the board's best and proposed best and final proposal. Yeah, but there was other other um, supplements that was on on top. Of, it wasn't just SLP that they were responding to. The, there were um, a couple of other supplements that were. I, I'm here with the response on the SLPs. If there are others that you're waiting a response for, mm -hmm. since we do have to come back, tell me what they are now. They're right here. I'm giving okay, you so them. we got them. Never we mind. Have okay. them. We can caucus with him. Yeah, there with was that. some elementary and secondary. Yes. Well, you're right. for for the record, it's elementary music teachers. Yes, I've got it. It's them. the elementary music teacher um, music in our schools. Um, I got them. It is the elementary yearbook. Uh, it is elementary track, um, and in, it is also the verbiage. Um, explaining the SLP supplement as well. Got it. Well, you got our proposal on the SLPs. We will follow up on the remaining ones. Um, last one was the ESY uh, on the MOU. Mm -hmm. um, as I understand it, that was something that was a T8 on at the table and received the communication from, from MCEA that not a desire at this point in time to proceed forward with that. That's Am I wrong? That's, that's emphatically wrong. Okay, because I read, and let me explain, the, and the letter I got said that MCEA does not want to engage in partial ratification that's so true. That's true. That's true. Okay, so but but to say that that we backed out of the ten. I'm not saying you backed out. I'm saying, as I understood it, the the M you want the MOU to go forward because I read the letter and it seemed to suggest that didn't want to partially do things. Who authored that letter? Because it, it it no what what Matt's email communicated to them is that phone call uh, uh, phone yeah. Thank you. What his phone call was communicating to to the district is that. At the bargaining table in session number 12, we had a discussion about trying to get another bargaining date prior to today, either last week in, or the first week in March. Those dates didn't work for me. We agreed that because we can't meet during the week of the 18th, we'd focus on getting that ESY MOU ratified. Right, because when it was presented to us, it was presented to us, and it was uh, they were talking about the board had an urgency, and we wanted to communicate the summer school um, pay for prior t to start recruiting folk for summer school. We understood the urgency. We went in the back, had a caucus, came out swiftly, and agreed to the terms of the MOU. But again, that the the, um, the video from the superintendent came out. And it didn't state that, well, we can't get to the table on the week of the 18th, but what we're going to do is we have an agreement from MCA to ratify this, this MOU. So that wasn't communicated. What we said at the table, how we would be productive during the week of the 18th, wasn't communicated in, in the video. And it was presented as if we were stalling or, or, or delaying. And th that made it up to my superiors. And I got um, a pretty good um, lecture about going on the table and agreeing to bifurcate our contract because the district has an urgency. And I took that, I took that on the hand and, and I told them that I understand that we're not supposed to bifurcate our contract, but what I was trying to do was take two steps towards the district. And it was returned, that, that effort was returned by not even communicating what we were offering to do. So when, when that came out, we decided that, all right, we're not going to bifurcate our contract if they're not going to clearly communicate what our plans were with respect to not being able to meet until the, the, the 26th. So we knew coming in um, from the 27th the, the direction we wanted to go with the salary proposal. So we said we can, we can um, ratify everything that we're working on along with the ESY um, proposal all at the same, the same time. But... I'm just, the, the part that I'm, I'm struggling with 
Terry, and, and uh, I'm thinking that we're going to have to to address this ESY um, anyway. And here's, here's the reason. Um, this was ratified by the school board at the last board meeting, right? Yes. yes. What you guys ratified didn't have a signature or indication of a tentative agreement from MCEA. Mm -hmm. That document that's now public record only has signatures from the district's side, just the chief negotiator from the district and the superintendent from the district. There's no MCEA signatures on that document that was ratified. That goes against the historical nature of, 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 of our ratification process. So what really happened is that they ratified a language that doesn't reflect our tentative agreement. Every article or MOU that we ratify is, is um, TA is written on top of it, or on the side of it, and then you have the dates by all of the participants as well as, as um, the signatures. Yeah. So, so it, it has all of the, the signatures on it, and, and that doesn't. For precedent purposes, we, we need to discuss that because I don't want to start a precedent where articles can be ratified by, by the board that doesn't have the appropriate signatures on it. So that, that's one of the concerns that, that, that I have. They need to ratify a, a version that has our signatures on it. So are, are you saying that the version that the board approved is inaccurate? The, I'm not using the term inaccurate. What I'm saying that it lacks an endorsement I hear by that, signature. But substantively, aside from the endorsement, is the language of the MOU not what was agreed to at the table? The, the language appears to be what, what was agreed upon at the, at the table, but it doesn't satisfy the requirement of previously historical tentative agreements between the union and the district and the, uh, and the board and the school district. So if, if we're looking at, at this, if this language should become the subject of, of um, ar arbitration or grievance, and this is the exhibit that is being used, where is it an indication that this is a tentative agreement agreed upon by both, both parties? So any, any one of us, either side, can produce a document like that and, and represent it as a tentative agreement, although it doesn't have all of the signatures and in the framework of a tentative agreement. That's all I wanted to, to bring to your, your attention. We, because Matt and, and myself, we're always available. Uh, I have the um, ability to, to sign off on this on, 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 on my phone. So it doesn't even require a lot to get a signature from us on, on this. That's why I'm super surprised that they ratified a, a language, ratified this language without even asking us to stop by and, and, and put a signature on it is very, very uncharacteristic. That, that's why I wanted to bring it to your, your attention because we, we usually sign off on it, send it, send it right back from, from our, our office. Or I have the ability to, like even with, like right now, if you would send me that, that document, I have my signature and Matt's signature embedded on my computer. We can electronically sign that tonight, right? But it never was presented to us with the opportunity to, to sign off on it after we said, yes, we agree to it. Didn't, didn't the president of MCEA at the last session request that it be presented to the board for approval? No, what we, we, didn't, we, we, we didn't suggest that. What, what we said was they were, the um, district was conveying an urgency, right, that this needed to be signed quickly. And what we were saying is that since we can't get to the table prior to the 26th, your next board meeting was on the 19th. Mm -hmm. We have to post this MOU at least three days before a ratification vote takes place. So on the record, we, we said that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the 18th, 19th, and the 20th would be the days that we would post this MOU for our members to read it, understand it, and then we would hold the ratification vote on the 21st or the 22nd. That's what we, the agreement that we made at the, at the table that I explained earlier that we took out of consideration when it wasn't clearly articulated about what, what the union's plans were for the 18th. We weren't delaying. We were trying to address 
what the district deemed as an urgent MOU. Oh, it's urgent, it can't wait until we ratify everything else. Since we can't come to the table, let's get this ratified. That's what the plan was. That's why it's so hurtful that, that it was characterized the way that it was characterized in the video, because that's not what was said at this, at this bargaining table. We made a commitment, all right, so we don't know how long we're gonna take on, on the salary. We still got a, look, a couple outstanding. Let's, let's do this to show the board that we wanna at least be productive. So that's the reason why. If, if there's not a, um, appreciation shown for it, then why go through two ratification processes when we only have to do one? We were gonna go through two because the board had ex has expressed their, their urgency in getting this, this done. Like we're willing to work with the board and, and address these things, but we're not willing to to be um, to to be disparaged the way that that we were disparaged when all we were trying to do was help the district and, and heard and understood the urgency that they conveyed with that um, ESE um, ESY language. Please, and and Mr. Harmon, what what I what I had said on the record um, was was that historically. The board, there was questions about whether the board had an appetite to re approve the MOU prior to MCEA. And I said, there, I could not re recall which MOU it was, but I know that previous boards had a history of doing that. And if you turn to the last page, you see that we handed out, you'll see that there's an MOU that was, that was approved by the board on March 19th with no signatures. If you go to the previous page from April 12th, 2023, that was the exact same MOU that I was referring to. And if you look on there, you'll notice that it has four signatures. I, I get that, I, but I guess my understanding, so if I go back and watch the video, I'm I was, I was not I was not recommending that the board approve something without my signature on it. Yeah, what we were saying is, that the board meeting was going to take place on the 19th. So unless they didn't want to ratify, my question was, would the board be entertained ratifying this MOU prior to the union? The reason why I'm asking that question is because your next board meeting is on the 19th. And we wouldn't be able, the earliest we would be able to have the ratification is the 21st. So unless they wanted to wait until the April school board meeting, we're, we'll find ourselves in a position where they would have to ratify on Tuesday and we would be ratifying on Friday. That's what was stated at the, at the table the last, the last time. And, and what, what's more is that had, had the author of this MOU um, got it right in October of 2022, we wouldn't be having this conversation. If they got it right in February or April of 2023, uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And now it's we're we're like we're like over four on on this one. Um, I mean, this is this is pretty ridiculous. And and to be blamed for for holding up this process. And there were there were times this could have been a two year agreement when the other one was a two year agreement. But that was a, a, a Scribner's error or a no. miscommunication. It, it, was. it was not a Scribner's error. We were told that these funds were going to be paid through one of our ARC funding, and we didn't know how much would be there, so we were told to have that initial MOU done for at least one year so that those ESC teachers can do and teach ESY and get the $50 an hour. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that that happened within a quick three week period under the leadership of the previous president of the union. And so that it was not a mistake or it was just, it was just said, we're not sure. So we'll do it for this, that well, one year. That's, that's not what the author so, of the MOU told me on the phone. And I didn't send that out in an email to teachers. So. What, the email that was sent by the director of exceptional student education. Yes because she keeps receiving phone calls from ESC teachers, there's no application for them to apply to teach ESY right now. And mm -hmm. that is an issue. They can only and, send in a paper there application. Would've, there, would've, there would've been, had, had this been done correctly the first time, the second time, or the third time, that application would already be out. And it would not be anywhere near the responsibility of MCEA for holding that up. Mm -hmm. We had nothing to do with that. 
Is there, there's a desire at the last session to do this, right? To get these pays in, in, in place so mm -hmm. that as ESY approaches, what, so two months? That we ratified the year so what's the issue with going forward with it right now? There, there's no issue going okay. forward. What we said was we were coming to the table tonight to agree to option number two, which was the biggest hurdle, and to close all outstanding languages. In my conversation with you prior to this meeting, I explained to you that MCEA had the aspirations to come here and finish for tonight. You, would, you said it in your introduction that for the rest of the bargaining session, it would be um, you or, or Michael sitting in the place of the chief negotiator. And I remember um, saying to you and Wit on the phone, you plan on having that many more bargaining dates? Because we're coming on Tuesday to try to finish this thing. If we have to go um, one, more, one more week to, to get all of the, the language that we discussed today cleaned up, then, then so, so be it. But our, our mission and, and objective was that today would be the final day of bargaining and then we would be able to start this ratification process and get that ESY um, MOU ratified with everything else. So not only would the ESY teachers be getting um, their applications to apply for these positions, but our folks will be getting those those yes dollars. I think all of that is is um, a priority at, at this point. So they have an urgency to get ESY. We have an urgency to get everything else done. So we want to march towards getting it finished and then ratify everything at the same time. There's absolutely for the record, absolutely positively, no um, no truth to the fact that we are, we're not interested in, in, in um, ratifying this MOU or that we have any kind of second guessing or, or anything about this MOU. This MOU puts money in the pockets of our bargaining unit members and that's always um, an interest of, of the union to get our bargaining unit members paid. So anything of the contrary is just simply not true. Okay, two things on that. Um, I'm not a, a, a big fan of, of talking about conversations, but when we spoke, you asked me if it was going to be me or Michael at mm -hmm. sessions, and I told you I would be at this one, and if there was a session on April 9th, it would be Michael. Right. So um, what I was trying to do is just make it clear to you who would be attending those sessions. Definitely. It wasn't a suggestion. No, that, I, and okay. I'm not trying to, to All right. make it a suggestion. I was just letting you know that in that conversation that we had, I wanted to express in, in jest and in, in, the, in, in the, the lighthearted manner that, that I operate to let you know what April session we want to finish on I, on Tuesday. I think that's everybody's <laughs> yep. goal. But I will say, too, the when we came to the table today on some of these language items, it's fairly clear you had some expectations for receiving future language. Like when we're talking about the leave section, we went through and it was, these things aren't strike through and underlined. It'll take all night to go through these things. So I think obviously coming to the table, I think you were anticipating receiving some additional documents. So what documents are you referring to? The, the, the leave language that was proposed back in February. Right. Where Christine had provided some draft language to review. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I guess there was a March 6th session. I'm no. Not, okay. Um, I misread that. Um, March 6th session was canceled. If we're, if we're going to provide you with language on the leave stuff, underlined, stricken through, do you want to go ahead and do that tonight, or do you not want to? We, I'm trying to yeah, understand. But, but I, I, I'm trying to, to make sure that we're not the subject of another video. If, if it's an opportunity to get it done tonight, let's do it tonight, <laughs> because we come here with the authority to get it done every time we sit at this table. So if I say, oh, you know what, it's 7 o'clock, I mean, I've worked till 9, 30, 10 o'clock in Okeechobee and had to drive an hour and a half home afterwards. So if for the sake of, of, of more bad PR, I'm telling you if, if, if it's something that you guys have the ability to do in, in the caucus, by all means, by all means, let's, let's get it done. Because I don't want it to be put on, on, oh, the union needs another session. The union does not need another session.
And so on the MOU, you're, are you prepared to execute that today? The MOU for ESY? Mm -hmm. Yes, we've been prepared last bargaining session. I think the, the heavy lifting was the agreement, putting pen to paper for a signature is the easy part. And, and as I stated, if, if it's helpful, you can email me the document. We can electronically sign it with our signatures and email it right back to you tonight. Mm -hmm. Or could we just sign, uh, sign the one that was presented? <laughs> yeah. Those are all options, but... Also, Terry, if I could correct something that was hold on. If if I could correct something that was said at the table, this ESY MOU is not holding up applications because we have members that are sitting here who have applied already. It's not holding up an application for them to apply, but we cannot do an internal posting with a dollar value on it because there's no ratification. So that's what it's holding up. Teachers okay. are not going to say, I'm going to do this for $25 an hour when I can go apply for maybe something else in the summer program that's $50 an hour. So it's, we send out applications to gauge interest. We've done it that way for as long as I've been here, going back to 2003. And so I'm just saying, so just to very much clarify that is that when it comes down to the rubber meets the road, if we don't post an internal posting with the proper dollar value, they're not going to work in ESY. And I wouldn't blame them. So it appears as you being that we have a tentative a agreement, you can't post it until it's ratified? So the way that I understand it, and I can maybe get some so help from someone here about internal post, about this posting. So walking in here tonight, mm -hmm. we, we don't have a tentative agreement mm -hmm. coming into here. But actually, I thought I didn't have to talk tonight. <laughs> but um, long story short, um, in order to start the process, um, mm -hmm. we, we, yes, we did put out, hey, if you're interested, basically let us know. But we could not put a rate on, on there with the internal posting because we don't have any form of agreement walking mm -hmm. in here tonight. What we do after we have a tentative agreement, then that's subject to the process of how we want to move that forward expeditiously. Mm -hmm. So when we say we didn't have a tentative agreement tonight, is a tentative agreement reflected by signatures? Yes. That's oh, because yeah. we had a verbal. Uh, right, a yeah, verbal. okay. Mm -hmm. I'm up next. Okay. Um, take one and pass it around, please. <laughs> yes. Is that placement? Yes. yes. Thank you. They said they're going to give us a, yeah, they, they have to give us a response. On the caucus. Sir. Oh, okay. I just realized we're back on tape. So, um, 
MCEA should have in front of it a proposed experience placement schedule. Yes. And you know, back in the day, this used to be the easiest part of negotiation because all the increments were in $300 increments. So you just move people up on the step and you're good to go. Um, however, it changed as you've discussed with the T implementation of the TSIA and the compression. And in our option to proposal, we tried to address the compression that you're very pleased that you um, have indicated your um, tentative approval of that. So for those who are watching, um, on your screen right now, um, we have a listing of all MBUs and their beginning annual contract. Of course, we have negotiated TS, the TSI as you see there. So Carter, as we stand today, Carter, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's, I, I don't want to disrupt you. I'm move up a little bit closer so I can, yeah, 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 I can see it. On, Thank down, you. Come on down, Bob Barker. Come on down. Prince Justin. Did you hear what he said? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to have a discussion about the beginning of the contract. Um, and uh, the Thank you. All right, thank you. So, so we have a listing of your MBUs. We've, we've been kind of tracking them for about two years or so. So right now, as we speak, um, after the implementation of the TSIA, we knew that our base minimum was 49.5. That's what we had agreed to when we implemented the TSIA. So our data suggests that if you were to do this and look down here at the corner, here, our average salary is 52.328. Now, that's not all 196 folks. Well, I can pull those out, and we'll be at a little bit under 50, a little bit under 53,000, 53, as I recall. In any case, follow the bouncing ball. So we're at 49.5. We know that the people with zero years of experience, right, don't get any basically any pay for performance, and we've addressed that. Year of experience adjustment is zero, so their new base obviously is 49.5. We've separated the ARP bonus because that does not affect the base. So for those watching, there are always two competing interests when you're dealing with an experience placement schedule. One is that the association does, wants to make sure that any incoming teacher does not exceed any existing teacher. That's something that we're very mindful of. And secondly, the district wants to place um, incoming teachers and publish a schedule that is competitive to our surrounding districts. So there's a, a balance that we have to strike. So with this new experience placement schedule that we're going to show, this links this, oh no, it froze. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh-oh, wasn't expecting that one. Saving auto recover, that's never a good sign. All right, there we go. So that, this spreadsheet here links to the pivot table that you're seeing here. So follow what I'm saying. So based on how many folks I've got, zero years of experience, that one year, and I'll, and I'll walk you down this, uh, the schedule, I guess. I learned it from camp last year. <laughs> So we have 102 AC teachers that are on 49.5. Let's say I decided, this district decided, well, our base minimum is going to be 49.575, then we'll be jumping or leapfrogging these people. So everywhere you see is yellow. That's where, and, and follow the numbers on the schedule, 49.5 here for zero, 49.585 for one year of experience, let me go down, I'll just bring you down here. For two is 46, 49,670, excuse me. Three is 49,755, so you follow what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm not jumping or leapfrogging any existing MBU. Now, these numbers are predicated, again, we didn't know tonight how we we're gonna shake out, but after the implementation of the years of experience adjustment, these are the salaries that would yeah. result from that, mm -hmm. okay? So as we go down, or up the schedule rather, 
5 is 49,925. So you can see what I've done right. in making sure no that I have not leapfrogged anybody with respect to the placement schedule. Now, to answer your question that you have not asked me, I do have a little bit of a problem when I get to year 27. Okay. Um, when I get to year 25, I have two MBUs that do get leapfrogged. I have three MBUs at year 27 that do get leapfrogged by $15, one is $900, etc. I think we can deal with that with a salary adjustment. We can deal with that, yes. We can deal with that. We can talk about that. Okay. But out of your... Hmm? I'm sorry, can you repeat those numbers again? Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, you're, I'm not sure it to you, actually. Right, sunlight is the best disinfectant? Two, 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 <laughs> Let's do it. So if I go to year, so if I go to year 25, uh -huh. let's go... He's here all night. He's here all night, people. What am I doing? Oh. Making jokes. Oh, making jokes. So if I go to year 24, okay, so <laughs> year 24, I'm at 54, 340, right? Mm -hmm. If I go to year 25, I'm actually going to go in reverse. At 54, 340, 54, 53, which is less than 54. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Now the reason, and you see I highlighted this in red, the reason some of these folks did not verify the years of experience, some of these folks did not score at highly effective on their evaluation, there's a myriad of things why that's happening. But compared to, as I said, a 1,200 plus bargaining unit, we can deal, I don't, well, I think we can deal with that and work with that. So which is why if you look on your schedule, you'll see at year 25, I'm at 55, 525. So with these folks, we'll have to deal with them separately. But we, we dealt with that before in previous. Yeah. Correct. All right, yeah. Correct. So those are the only areas. Yet years 25 and year 27, everybody else is not leapfrog. Is it the same number at 27, just like two people? Like uh, let me said? check. No, it's actually three MBUs. So at 27, we're at 55, 610. Check me on my thing. Yep. 55, that's 610 at 26. That's 26, excuse me. At 55, 610. But then I go in reverse at 54, 145. So I had to set the schedule and freeze it at 26 and 27. So both reflect 55, 610. That's why it reflects 55, 610. But there are those three in reds are your only three in your entire bargaining unit member. It, it comes down to those five. So as I said, we can work that out on the side or something. Um, then we're back on track, 56.055. Oh, I didn't see 29. My bad. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. so 50, 28 is 56. 055, which is correct. So there's no leapfrogging in 28. There's no leapfrogging in 28. Right. And I did miss nine. that in my notes. In that year 29, I have one. Okay. Okay? So total is six. So what we're hoping for at this point is Mr. Raymond has a um, recruitment fear on April 27. Uh -huh that we would like to know whether or not these rates would be permissible to use for incoming members um, to, to make sure that we can have a placement schedule that we can advertise. Sure. So with respect to, uh, we obviously want to take a, take a, caucus, uh, a caucus and we can discuss it mm -hmm. we appreciate uh, the placement proposal. And I appreciate the acknowledgement of the, of the leapfrogging aspect. To, to have um, about 1,200 employees and, and only leapfrog around six, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. So think about it, let us know, but we obviously would like to. What, is, it, is it something that we can dive into? Because yes, I know, I know we're going to have to do a little bit of research and see who they are and what's going on. With right, them. because based upon the, um, the option that we selected, if there are a little leftover money in, in one of all options two. One, 1. 1.5 was, I think we're actually a little bit over budget, if I recall. For option two? Yes. Okay. Yep. How much, um, how much do you think it's going to cost financially to, to um, to write the ship with respect to the leapfrog? 
I think that we may get into some philosophical questions, okay. which is if I'm an MBU, busted my tail, and I scored it highly effective, and somebody else did not do as well as me, why should I then, should the district then make up that difference? So let's see what the data says. Let's see what, and then we can, because I've obviously it's, you know, uh, now it's six people. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. What, what happens to somebody um, who got hired on in, in like September, for example? Are in September, in September, it would be in my file. Yeah, they would be in my so file. They're, they're on this schedule. No. No. Once we have agreement and we implement mm -hmm. so the raises, on, okay, so they're on the. Well, they're, they're it gets the adjusted. TS, yes. The TSIA the TSIA has it's already already in there. Okay. So if you were, let me try if I can do this because there's a smorgasbord. Okay. So if I was just looking at my my 196s, right? Mm -hmm. So if I, hopefully, ah, I crashed, damn it. <laughs> all right, I was trying to show you pretty much all my one night, uh, great. Oh, so it says product activation failed up at the top yeah. there. All right, let me close and it, it and cloudy. open it back. So yeah. Don't save. And there we go. Yeah, let's see if I can try to do it again. hide the names to protect the innocent mm -hmm. for now. <coughs> All right, so if I go here, let's try again just to give you my 196s. Please don't crash. Okay. All right, so if I go here, <coughs> ah, wonderful, it crashed. I was just trying to tell, show you what the average is based on our data that we have in-house and as we've talked about it in the past, because we haven't settled yet, we actually have missed the February reporting date. Mm -hmm. So if you were to compare us to other people now, we would suck. Mm -hmm. But now that we have this agreement, we will net meet the next reporting requirement. What's the next reporting requirement? I knew you were going to ask me that. I'm sorry. I, I, I haven't written down, but I, I knew one was in February. Yeah, you, you can email me. Right, OK. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the, on my computer, uh, what if I could? Uh, well, on my computer, I have it. Okay. But to answer your question, Matt, that person would be in, in my file today. Okay. Now, let's talk about verified years of experience because anybody who has who is in my file now, it's not like they can go out and say, hey, let me go see if I can. It's got to be in my file today because. If we now say, oh, let's just open the door and need everybody to go verify, there's a one-time shot to do that, that we've always had that procedure. And that would blow up my budget for sure. So the request is your approval, or at least indication, yep, we're good with this. So Mr. Raymond can go out. Typically, we have between 100 and 155 members that retire each year. Mm -hmm. However, because of the extension of drop, which we are fully aware of, we don't anticipate that we'll get that number, but of course we will need to go out and recruit for new members. So at 49.5 on the base, we think we're very competitive. Actually, I, I know I'm competitive until you negotiate with Indian River. Right. <laughs> um, we, are, we are very competitive with that. Yeah. And the average, as I ran it, was like almost 53,000. When you pull out the 201s and all those other, JRT, all those other guys, yeah, about 196. And I think that's, that's, so, um, that's why it's so easy to to um, agree to option, to option two, because that, that's what we want to do is be competitive with the rest of, yep. of the districts, our neighboring districts. So, Carter, yes, sir. Um, another, another question, because um, I, was, I was looking over um, a file that, that you all had sent over when we did TSIA. Mm -hmm. um, one of our MBUs with 22 years. All right, so let me stop you right there. Remember, when we did TSIA, we did not do it by years of experience. We did it by levels and step that was in the system. Okay. 
That's the difference. This is by years of experience because we're now recognizing, crediting you for that years of experience. But, but then how, how does somebody with their salary at 52.6, now this person coming in with 22 years at 53.360, would they not still be, be leapfrogged? No. In my file, I have all the years of experience lined up that have been verified, and my name and everybody, and the amount they would receive, which is the 85, for the most part, an option to $85 multiplied by that years of experience, and then where they're slotted, no one incoming would jump over them. years, 22, 22 times 85, that's 1870 plus 52, 600, they will be making 54, 470. Under the, under the S adjustment? Yes. Okay. So they would not get leapfrogged. And that's kind of the, purpose of it. the math that we did. I usually, I usually preface my questions when it comes to numbers by saying that I'm a social studies teacher, not a math teacher. So <laughs> I will consider, tell you consider that, that disclaimer retroactive. I will tell you that some of the union presidents that I've negotiated are, um, are social studies teachers, <laughs> and they have actually gone viral <laughs> on the internet in some of their proposals and some of their commentary. So the sm some of the smartest people I know. <laughs> So do we need to caucus or y yes, we where do. are we? <laughs> yeah. I think this was the last piece. Yeah, we wanted to caucus and discuss discuss this um, briefly. But the, the out, do we have any um, responses for the outstanding or, or are we going to have to? The, um, MIO, the MIOS, the Music in Our Schools. Uh, we were, that was their their several supplements. Well, did we present it to them? No. We don't have. Oh, yeah. Okay, so so that. But we do believe there's a path forward. Excuse me. I do believe there's a path forward that is in the current contract that would allow us to award those supplements. I think we need to bring that back in writing to you. That that's um acceptable. I just wanted to to know whether or not both parties will be working in in this caucus or or if it's just us. But if it's just us for the moment, we understand that you have to bring it back. But we would like to discuss this. Real briefly, because okay. any if we can get another TA, then right, I'm all for it. So yeah, there's some stuff obviously that we have to write up and bring back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. okay. absolutely. Fair enough. So if, if that's acceptable, then we'll we'll take a few minutes to, to caucus. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we had an opportunity to, um, to discuss the placement schedule. And I know we said prior to that six people leapfrogged out of 1,200 is a pretty good percentage. Very, very, very good work with respect to that. I have um, two things that I want to make sure is clear for the record. And that's on page 69 of the contract. It, it proceeds the placement schedule, and we just want to make sure that that's still going to be included. Um, it's titled the Martin County School District Instructional Employee Salary Information. It's found on page 69. So I just want to make sure that that language would still be um, honored but since um, there's no there, there's no introduction to strike this, this language. That strictly precedes this placement, so I want to make sure on the record that that remains 
in the, in the finalized version of this agreement. Um, Gary, can you clarify for me? Are we talking about the? It says payment for teaching experience. Yes, Is that sir. That you're talking yep. About? Okay. Yep, so that, that precedes the placement schedule and the contract. We just want to make sure that um, it remains as such. Yeah, there was no... Yeah, after it. I'm sorry. Yeah. It comes after yeah, it. Yeah, there was no... We didn't have any proposals. Okay, that. good. So just, and again, good to make sure. So like years of experience porting in, same thing, right? That's the first paragraph. So uh -huh. the placement schedule, you're asking if you come in with... 25 years from someone else, you're going to go on that placement schedule inclusive of that 25 years. So that's not going to change, right? As long as it's verified years yep, of service. Yep, verified years of service. Um, Within 90 days, it states, right? Yeah, yeah. yep, yep. So that wouldn't change. Um, and then the most important part is the um, to be granted on an equitable basis um, comparable to existing district teachers. I think that that gives us the flexibility to address any um, any issues of, of leapfrogging should they come. So right. with that, I understand that the, the um, salary placement isn't perfect, it's very hard to get perfect, but as long as we have a commitment to deal with those on a case-by-case -case basis, then I think that it's safe for us to agree to this um, to the salary proposal. Great job, Carter. Okay. So as a follow-up to that, just so we're clear, when Mr. Raymond goes out on April 27th to recruit new members, it mm -hmm. is permissible to use these rates, or do we have to wait for a full ratification of the wage package? Well, the, I think that's the position that we were introducing before with respect to the ES, ESY. Okay. Um, I don't anticipate that not being successful in the ratification okay. process, right. so I think that we, we can. Okay. Along with the applications for summer school, I think that we can okay. advertise those in lieu of, of it being yeah, ratified. Yeah, maybe I just put a little Pending asterisk ratification. On ratification on yeah, because that's historically what the district has, has yeah. done, right? So I think okay. that that's completely acceptable. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, were you looking at me to, to go? Because I've got a couple of things, too. Sure. Um, one, I think we... I think we pulled the correct version of the ESY MOU. I think Ms. Sessa may have sent a, a copy of that. Also, same understanding pending ratification. And I think there were a couple of items that we had talked about, um, some of the underlying strike through leave provisions. Mm -hmm. I think in the interest of time, that's one thing that we're going to need to to spend some time drafting up so that it meets what we've discussed here, that you need to be able to see it in that format. Mm -hmm. I also think, though, what's what's cascading with that is the um, option to proposal mm -hmm. that we discussed today. I think we need to make sure that we get that in writing. I do too, and so that it's it's clear kind of the parameters of it. And so we are going to bring that to you, I think, next as well. Okay. And so we were just in our caucuses, we're trying to just kind of understand timing wise, mm -hmm. and I think that that would help if we have that time to do that. Which yes, would, that, that's um, acceptable. Can you please add the millage um, I'm sorry. to yes, it as well? We, and we owe you a supplement the response, supplement, right. too. All right, let me make this all down. Thank you. Supplement. So can we make sure we've got ev everything? I think it's good. I, don't, <coughs> oh, I think you said you were going to take a look at Article 7, 2E. It was a no, but you said it was a slow no, and you'd reconsider it. So yeah, so um, we'll bring a response back to, okay, to that. That's fine. Uh, give him, give him the proper um, consideration. So since we're coming back, we'll, we'll bring fair. that back. I wrote down supplement response to millage. Was that two things or one two things? Yeah, that's two things. Yeah, two things. Yeah. Thank you. I have it all in one line. Yeah, but it's all it's two. Um, and it sounds. Tell me if I'm wrong, but in, once you receive. Is it you want to wait till the response to the other supplements come in before there's a position as to the SLP proposal? I think it would be best to do them all at the same the same time. Okay. Just explaining it to to all parties involved. I'd rather get a settlement at the same time on that on those terms.
so Gary, I've got leave, millage, supplement, um, option to language. And then one other thing, since I think there was a lot of progress made, mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of things here. If the hope is that that might be the session, I think, w and what I was talking to Nessessa about is, in there's a number of items as I've scoured through everything that there were some no's from each party mm -hmm. um, about proposals, language, different things, and does it make sense? I think for, I think it does. To if there's a list of things that you have proposed that we previously said no to. Mm -hmm. Do we want to bring those up at that session? And then the same for us, where there's a couple of items I saw that I'm aware of where we had made a proposal and you were not interested in it. And just to make sure we kind of have it all out there at that last session. Uh, I'm, I'm open to I'm open to it, but um, for, for record purposes, a lot of the things that we said no to, what was, uh, for example, like the, the Western Zone, um, suggestion like we said no to that two or three times on the on a record talking okay. about it I don't want to beat a dead horse but I also don't want <clears throat> if the goal is that's the last session there needs to be some conclusion as to those issues if they're not going to get agreed to it's material mm -hmm. so if if there are things that you've said no to more than once and you don't want to hear it again I'm not I'm just trying to make sure I understand when I mm -hmm. when we come to that April 9th mm -hmm. are these the only things that you want us to bring back for your consideration well I mean I think that there was only one proposal that we had that um, we wanted the, the district to take serious consideration is and that's the ground rules the, the ground rules on um, proposal and the reason reason being is because what, what makes what makes the, the process so much faster in, in the other tables that I'm, I'm at in, in the treasure code. For, for example, in Okeechobee, all proposals have to be on the table the very first session. If we're adding proposals after the first session, it has to be agreed upon by both parties. So with that practice, we know what the, the articles we're dealing with, and we check them off one by one, and we know when we're close to to finishing. Are we going to burn the midnight oil, put a couple more hours into this session so that we can finish? Or are we, is it enough articles to schedule another session? But I truly think that what separates our um, uh, an efficient bargaining process in this district is the lack of, of ground rules. And if, if there's an opportunity to, to have that discussion, you'll see that what's captured in our, our ground rules proposal is a lot of what we already do it just streamlines the process a, a, a little bit quicker but that that's the only thing that that we're significant significantly interested in in having serious discussions about whether it's this bargaining session or it's a future um, bargaining whether it's this bargaining year or a future bargaining year it's something that I think seriously needs to be considered and it's very few contracts in the state of Florida that doesn't contain some kind of ground rules for negotiations. We're an anomaly dealing with the fact that we don't have established ground rules to this process. Okay. Well, just think about that because I think what we'll do is, is we may just want to recap if there's some things in there that are really critical that we previously brought to the table, we may bring those up for discussion. I just want to make sure we're, we're getting everything out. Yeah, we're so. always open for a, a d okay. discussion. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 thank you, thank you. The payroll deduction language. So we, are we going to TA on the experience schedule? The experience, the placement schedule, and then? Placement schedule, we, we are agreeing to tentatively yeah. agree to that. Sign that tonight yep. with a clean copy? And the ESY, if you have it. I've emailed it to you for your electronic signature. Let's do it right now, then, Julie. No, Tom. It's better than the present, <coughs> is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're done. Yep. Gary. We'll get it done right now. Mom so you want to put some lines up here? TA? Yeah, I was just thinking of something, but sorry. I put iron punched yours with holes. This car. 
charger have one that doesn't have holes in it? No, no, no. Oh, well, okay. we'll give you an extra. Do you have a clean one? Salary schedule. A clean one yes. what? It's on your left. This thing? Yeah. I wrote on mine. Yes. Oh, yeah, have yes. Okay. Yeah, this one doesn't hold. Yeah, I have extras. Oh. You need them. Oh, thank you. Let me make sure I get you back before we get lost in this. So you, the one that you sent them has our signatures on it already? Yes. And they have to sign that one? Yes. Oh, thank you. I do want them. Usually write TA in the date up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. 326.24. Three twenty six twenty four. 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 Three it's different TA? folks for different different oh, different yeah, folks do it differently. Signs that right. Signs it. right? <laughs> that's correct. My, that's correct. My recollection, June. That's trying to be. Would you like me to write Terry Harmon Esquire here so people can read it? <laughs> sure. I don't get to put Esquire because nobody cares. Well, it's already on there. Gary Simmons, MCEA slash FEA negotiator? Yes, that's acceptable. That's good because that's what's going <laughs> on. <laughs> Anything, anything else from you all down there? You want me to, you want to do that? Oh. <laughs> no, I think everybody is tired, tired of looking at me. Is this like trying to set a record or something? that works. You can lock up and pull the gate shut. Stupid. That'll make her happy. <laughs> so stupid. Actually, I'm going to finish this next night. Yes. <laughs> Julie, do you want me to CC anyone else on this? Um, Terry. All right. Mr. Harmon, it is. Second. Since we're not, we're done with the formal part. Just some the thing I was thinking about. Where I, I'm sorry, Julie, I kept thinking. Wait, are we done? With yeah, we're done. Okay. This is just. I mean, I'm, well, yeah, just leave it on. The passing of um, like formal, like paper documents with strike through and underline. Have mm -hmm. you seen, or have you tried to look into like if there's a. a 
Teams method to do it. I've seen that recently where things would be put on Teams for the, you know, public facing, of course, but it allows for kind of quicker drafting instead of having to do paper copy. We'll take that, we'll go make changes, print it out, paper copy is like you throw it up on Teams. On, on and your, uh, Outlook. Yeah. The markup. Yeah. Like it's, we markup just. feature. I've, yeah. That. I've, I've proposed to, in labor relations and, and in years past, um, sort of like a bill drafting software that essentially does the same thing. Yeah. If Teams has that capability. Just trying to think of ways that might help. Yeah. With copies uh, at the table. And, yeah. That's well, all, but I don't want to. I appreciate that, but j just to answer your, your question, that's the way we, we do it in Indian River. We just sit in a circle and we put one computer up, usually Mr. Fagan's computer up to the to, to the big screen. It's gone. Then, yeah, and then yeah. We, we do it real time. After we finish, we print it out or, or email it to each other because we have the ability to electronically sign just like we did for this ESY and just send it back. But I think that um, posting it, in this session, everything that we post becomes public record. That's oh, my, yeah. my understanding. So I think yeah. that it's totally fine to, to, to do it in that in that manner. But and isn't that driven by the methodology that you're using as an interest-based bargaining as worse as opposed to the collective style that we do now? Right. So that's a good a good point. So prior to us inter entering interest-based bargaining, we had some um, mediators from the FMCS come and train us on that process. What wasn't a part of that training process was the method in which we come to tentative agreements on. So there were no parameters or frameworks or limitations for doing it in a manner that was just suggested. So um, we can take that for what it's, what it it's worth. The trouble, yeah. the trouble with the interest-based bargaining that I've experienced is when the state starts cutting the budget, mm -hmm. everybody kind of retreats back to their own to, to their corners, right? <laughs> <laughs> and pull out the swords, so. <laughs> you know, this, this past session was really, really good and it, it was productive, so I'm hoping that that's a, a model that can continue um, in, in that, that district. Okay. Yeah. That was just a thought. All right, thanks for sharing. Thank you. Thank you.